T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off. Shake it back! Does that feel good? Yeah! <laughs> shake and bake shake and bake uh good Hi, afternoon Nancy. good evening shake and bakers good middle of the night good morning whatever it is uh for you welcome to episode 18 of the shake and bake show with stevie fast lyle barnett special guest super nasty. future top fuel driver super nasty. nasty and we got international woman of mystery cabernet courtney uh looks like greek goddess over there in the middle of somewhere. I don't even yep. know where you're at in the world. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. It's been two weeks. We've missed the hell out of you. Uh, it's good to, good to have you guys. What's going on, Shaker Bakers? What is happening in the world? Say bye, guys. I got to go take a bath. Go take a bath. Bye, you, you. Okay, bye. Oh, my God. Look at those vans. Yeah. Check the flag. <laughs> Winning. Um, yeah, Winning. Are, I have been uh, continuing my quest to be like the world. Uh, the fresh off of a uh, a money winning weekend in beer money, we did not get to the to the final round. We had to split it three cars, bat all down. We're going to talk about that and how I feel about tracks and not being prepared for stuff like that. But anyway, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Pretty much you in a nutshell. Uh, that, I, I want to dive into all of that. Oh. We're definitely diving into all of that. What about you, Double C? I am. Wait, this side. As you can see, I'm in Santorini, Greece with my sister. Y'all may know her, Erica. Shut up, Lyle. And Kristen <laughs> Anderson, one of my best friends in the world. And we've just, it's 2.30 in the morning here. Oh, 2.30. When did you and start drinking? we have been drinking? tonight, tonight. And this is what they call in town. It's very popular. It's called a porn star martini. Oh, what what's in that thing? Hmm. Kristen, what's in this thing? Passion fruit, vodka. Passion fruit, vodka, and some puree shit, and then a fried flour or something. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> um, here we so, are. So, when did you get to to Greece? I know uh, we've had. I've had a lot. Of, I put a couple of polls up on social media this week, and right, uh, people are very excited to, to to hang out with you tonight at two o'clock in the morning. When did you get there? How long are you there? Um, so I went straight, and we're going to talk about this later. But I went straight from the PDRA Pro Stars event. Saturday night, I um, drove Sunday morning to D.C., and then we flew out of Dulles on Sunday evening, went to London, and then straight here to Santorini. So this is my second night in Greece of eight. Mm. Eight nights in Greece. What time did you start drinking today? <laughs> Why would you ask questions like that? Because it's the Shake and Bake Show, and I can ask whatever the fuck I want. There you go. I will say, I did not have a mimosa. I did not have a mimosa with breakfast, which I usually do because I had what was the greatest latte what? I've ever had in my life. I and then I started probably about something. one o'clock. <laughs> it was about one o'clock today, but tonight after dinner, Erica, Chris, and I went to dinner. And after dinner, we found this little bar with this Greek goddess named George. And he was just serving us espresso martinis and shit got out of hand. And I said, we got to go to the shake and bake. How there many folks, how many folks do you have there with you? I mean, not tonight, like just as Chris a group. Like, uh, how many of y'all went? Three. Just three. Of Chris you. and Erica and I. Lyle, yep. did you get invited to go to Greece? No, you wouldn't. No, of course no not. I didn't get invited to go to Greece either. We, <laughs> no. Hey, nothing says we can't get in the honky rocket and we <sighs> skim down. We'll find an aircraft carrier somewhere between here and there. Put that baby down, refuel, right back up. That thing would use a no, lot of No, that's called the fuel. ocean, Lyle? Hmm? Yeah, that's called the ocean where you would need to refuel. The middle of the, the reason I said aircraft carrier. <laughs> okay, well, you don't have to. <clears throat> I don't know if the U.S. government will let us um, land a honky rocket uh, out there, but I would try. Whatever. Uh, no, it's just a it's Erica's, Erica's 40th is later this year. She wants to make it clear she's not 40 yet. Okay. Um, but we don't have time with the racing schedule and with Pro Stock not being on the swing. This was just the ideal time. And our best friend Kristen came with us. Stevie, are you forty yet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm like a late model car with a lot of miles on it. So, like, um, 
I look like I'm halfway not to midlife, but really I got about 300,000 miles on me. I'm a, I will say, CD, I like that you have the scruff back. Yeah, there's an ulterior motive to this that we're not going to – I'll reveal it on the next Shake and Bake show, but there's there's an there's an ulterior motive, but thank you. Maybe it's the – I started growing this today that, about, two, about 2 o'clock. Well, maybe it's just that you want to prove that the weight of manhood is not too much for you to bear. It is not too much for me to bear. I got more shit about that comment uh, than anything this week. They're like, uh, so what happened to your manhood? I'm like, well, you know, Lyle said I shaved it off. Um, well, Lyle can speak of that because of that beard. Right. So we have a lot of shit to talk about. I'm going to run down some stuff on my list, uh, do some housekeeping. And uh, folks are starting to pile on. Uh, thank you guys for, I haven't addressed all the shaking bakers. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Uh, double shit show wants to know what's up with the zebra dress. Are you on an African safari? Um, are y'all gonna, gonna make me show my dress again? Like, Lyle did? that thing's probably is that like grandmother's quilt? Like, did you put all that together and take it to Greece? To, 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 <laughs> Stand up and let's see that thing. Do a twirl, ballerina twirl. Ballerina twirl. What kind of shoes are you wearing? Yeah, you got any high heels on or you got some flats? Uh, That's you didn't even they, bring any high have, heels. They have cobblestone roads up there. You break an ankle. They do, and it was oh, awesome. Oh, and oh. also, like, I don't do high heels. Come on, get out. Um, <laughs> so since we talked last, there's been a lot of racing. Uh, we definitely let me let me go over some of the housekeeping stuff. Then we're gonna get to everybody's excited to talk about PDRA. Everybody's excited to talk about last couple of NHRA races. Um. I had a uh, one of the quality manufacturers that I get to deal with, uh, Tommy at Pitmat USA, sent in a request for a little shake and bake shout out. Um, he had a race in Bandemir uh, at the Mile High Nationals. Brandon McBride was talking shit to him, told him he's going to kick the shit out of him in a turbo car and a Corvette. And what happens? Tommy from Pitmat goes out there and teabags him. Uh, so Bro Line uh, Racing got crushed, and Pitmat Tommy says. So that's our, I don't have a notebook for the tea bag counter, but that's one. Oh, oh, yeah. I that saw was... a comment earlier that I was something about in the bottle. No. So I'm on the porch at the house that we are renting until we buy our. Oh, no. Oh, good. That's his cover. internet. <laughs> what? So you're at the porch? You're <laughs> on fine. the porch? You're sleeping on yeah. the porch? Yeah. And these are, the, you know, my UFOs. Back here. Oh, yeah, they're back. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's good. Boy, I hadn't been bourbon in about there three go. days. Those pretty guys. good. Shit. Um, anyway, so no, so, I'm just beer in the Yeti cup. Beer in the Yeti cup. Um, so we had a bunch of tractor pulling going on this week. I see Hank in chat talking about that. Um, we have had Bandamere. We have had Seattle. We have had PDRA. Uh, so where do you guys want to take off first? And then we're going to get into some controversial shit here in a little bit. I mean, if we're going chronologically, PDRA Let's talk about was pre-Seattle. Let's talk about Bandamere. Okay, then Bandamere was first. Who, how many professional drag racers do you think cried at the end of the Mile High Nationals? Everybody I saw was emotional. Everybody I talked to. I've never seen so many team photos of entire teams taking up the racetrack. Uh I know I love racing in Bandamir and love going there. I was choked up watching it. I wasn't there. Was it as was it the same as it appeared there on the ground? It was. Um, Wes Buck said this the best is like you felt like you could take it out of the air and grab it. And that was absolutely true because there was just so many people like you take – all the pro racers that have been there and their professional career, that's a big deal. But also there's another tier to this, to a, a track being closed, is that this track was so big on the junior dragster front when all of us were brand new in the junior dragster front. And coming from that as like the bookend, Leah, Sean, JR, Chris McGay, hey, us, like we have grew up racing there. So it was very, very different in a sense of where the people whose home track this was weren't the only ones upset. We all grew up racing at this place. And so it was really special. Sunday morning, we had a big photo shoot. All the pro drivers went down to the top end, got a photo shoot. And then Randy Lynn and I orchestrated a photo shoot for 
anybody who had run the juniors there to go do that. And we're going to gift it to the Bandemeers as a big thank you for all they've done. But it was honestly the Houston closing, Atlanta closing, all the things. This one was was really, really different. The driver intro, people were taking it in. After the winter circle, people, drivers were standing up on the wall. I was standing up on the wall. I was crying watching Alan Reinhardt um, sign out. John Bandemir was very emotional. Like it was, it was something like I've never, ever, ever seen before. And that trophy he gave, I don't know if you guys seen it or if anybody has a picture of it, but it's John with a Bible and the Wally standing there. And he gave that to each of the drivers. It was, it was something really, really special. And it was, it was very sad. Yeah, I, I the first time when I ran the West Bucks first World Series of Pro Mod in Denver, I was blown away by the fan, the fan base. Not only that, but the way you're treated when you come in the gate. And uh I'm sad to see that that thing go. Um do, do we have any updated news uh on the new facility? I've I've been reading what I can, but I'm I don't have boots on the ground there. I've heard nothing's official, but I've heard they're looking at space down by the airport because there's a lot of industrial space there. Um, I do know for a fact out of the horse's mouth from the Bandemir's mouth that this is not the end, no matter how long it takes, how quick, how long, whatever, that um, this isn't one of those situations where they're just thrown in the towel that they do not want the Bandemir name to go away in drag racing. They know how important it is. So whether it's in, gosh, damn, Florida. Denver, Texas, near the airport. Um, the Bandemeers have plans to keep going, and we just got to wait and see. And one thing that I can tell you is that if they want to do it, they're going to do it. Uh, so do we're, it. we're hoping for that they, that they get that sorted out. As far as the competition in Bandemir, it was really good racing. Um, shout out to my man. My man, Clay, just laid it to him, buddy. Yes. Killing it. I mean – like I talked to Clay right after he won, uh, not immediately after the next day. And uh, he told me basically, you know, it was easy. Not to mean that winning was easy, but when it is all coming together, it all appears as though it's easy. Mm -hmm. And you guys have had a good race with Erica's car and Lyle has too, where when you're just running good, nobody can touch you. And that's what Clay did in, in, in Vandermeer. I gave him my old Austin Cole quote, when your stuff's right, nothing matters when it ain't nothing helps. And, uh, they, they did awesome. Um, I, I did hear him say, he said, um, it's so crazy that we work so hard at this and it seems so hard, but when days that it's your day, shit's easy. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's insane. The drastic change that it makes. Yep. Yep. And, uh, when, when, when it is your day, nobody can take it from you. I promise you. It's, it's just going to happen. Yeah. There's, there's nobody. I mean, there's plenty of people I would love to see win, but I don't know of a single person that was like, man, I wish Clay wouldn't have won that race. You know, right. like Nobody. nothing seems more fitting than Clay Milliken to close it out there. I loved it. It was awesome. Yeah, it was good. Uh, and then who'd we get down, uh, run through the ranks there. You were there, there, CE. Um, Pro Stock was TJ, which was yeah. awesome yep. because that was his weekend. He wasn't worse than 20 something on the tree all weekend. Erica had a great weekend. Um, she was double duty in the mountain motor car, went to the finals in the mountain motor car, went to the semis in the pro stock car, nothing to hang your head on there, but it was, it was TJ's day. We knew it from the start and it was, it was awesome. And our whole team, I don't know if anybody watching saw that video of us celebrating, but you'd have thought we won the gosh damn world championship. We are so aggressive. We are so are aggressive. aggressive, but what, it's but awesome. Like, it? It Do makes we mean it? epic videos. It yeah, does. I, there's and nothing wrong with being aggressive. Mm. No. And then, uh, who who the heck won Funny Car? We've had two races since then. Was it Matt Hagen? Hagen, yeah. Yeah, Hagen, Hagen won. Yeah. Hagen, so both of my picks went flaming. Actually, all my picks went out. So Eric got crushed. I don't think Gage won motorcycle. He wasn't right? there. Who wasn't there? I forget who. I, oh, there was no motorcycle. No, I picked was, Erica. No, there was motorcycle there. Um, yeah, you're thinking about um, there's no pro stock car in Seattle. I know none yeah. of my picks won. I picked Leah, Hagen, oh, yeah, Erica, true. and I forget who I picked on motorcycle. Who won motorcycle? They basically all got crushed. I got to look. I can't believe it. I think it was Gage. It yeah, was it was because he just won again this past weekend. Yeah, if it was, then I finally got one right out of 9,000. 
Uh, yeah, Gage. Uh, yeah, look you. at the comments. They're telling us exactly. Yep. 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 <laughs> Thanks, guys. Is it? Uh, oh, it's pre-birthday for Double E. I was about to say, is it Double E's birthday? Yeah, I mean, we're just doing this because we have time. Her birthday's in October. Okay, I hear you, time. Uh, all right, so so Denver was was unbelievable. I cannot wait to get to Seattle because um, there's a lot of stuff to talk about there <laughs> in Seattle. Anything else uh, that besides Bandemir, uh that was memorable in Denver that we need to talk about? Uh, I seen a bunch of photos of y'all doing yoga and stuff at Red Rocks, and that's my favorite part of going to Denver. Last time we went, we all took our Harleys, went riding through the mountains, and uh, the experience of racing there is why I like racing there. Yeah, we went, it was uh, six o'clock in the morning and a group, about 15 of us went and did yoga up in Red Rocks, which is really awesome. And I'm not a morning person, hate the morning, but that place is unbelievable. Um, so started our Saturday off there in Red Rocks and um, it was pretty, pretty awesome. Being the last Denver that I think we're going to do for a minute, we had to do all the memorable shit, you know? If you were, if you were to build a racetrack right now and you said, okay, I got funds and I got a place. How long do you think it would take today's economy now? Not, this isn't where you could just buy things and get people to work on stuff. Two years. Five, I bet. I don't know. It depends. Like, I'm just telling you, you can't buy anything in the world and you can't get anybody to work. So I would say well, you're, there's no way. You're do it there, they've got the people. I don't know. God don't rest know, his soul. But Bruton Smith, maybe two to three years he could get it done. Okay. There we go. Yeah. I'm hoping. I won't. Got 40 to call me and oh, say, we're going to do it in 18 months. <laughs> Before we move on, Stevie Pill, good call. A track record of seven miles an hour was broken. The track record there was 330, and Brittany went 337. I'm telling you, we weren't even watching. We were in the in the field, and like we thought we heard a mistake. We're like, how does a track record get broken by seven, seven. miles an hour? Because Grubby let both of things you fall out. If you go back and listen to Brittany's interview, because we were up there in the tower, because Erica was number one qualifier with her, she said, we weren't really expecting that. Like, that wasn't something that they were shooting for. They were just trying to go A to B, which is insane. The A true story, I've said this before, I've never said it on here. The first time we ever went 560s in quarter mile NHRA, Gainesville 2019, we went right on Q1, went left on Q2. Q3, <laughs> it goes down there and runs 566. And we had never been faster than 575. And That's Billy crazy. tells me on the radio, he's like, 566. And I said, what? It was faster than an 86. He's like, no, 66. It was just like that. We just made a good run. And then when you're trying too hard, sometimes it just doesn't want to do it. Yep. Which is cool for Bandamere because you go out like crazy like that. I mean, up on the mountain, you think going almost 340, that's damn near impossible. But they did it. And it just shows you the potential of those cars if they were to uncork them. I like to tease Phil all the time. And when I ask, when I talk to top fuel crew chiefs and stuff, I always ask them if they didn't have a gear rule and they uncorked the, the rev limiter, what would it run? And they, they all say, we don't know, but it would, it would be scary. Wow. Do you have, so, do you have the Stevie yes, fly syndrome? man. Dang it. Hey, do you need the. Oh, no, no. <laughs> All right. Still, so, if you were if, if you've been drinking since one o'clock in Greece, I bet I could get you to stick your tongue to that thing. Woo -wee. Shut, shut your mouth. Erica told me to what did Erica tell me to do tonight? Stay in the middle of the road. Stay middle of the road and mind my mouth. Well, according to our YouTube poll that I put up, ninety-two percent of all of the shake and bake fans prefer a twelve continuous hour drunken C E <laughs> over a sober C E. There you go, Erica. Uh, so, <laughs> She's down there, but she okay. told me I need to just be better. You let know me I mean? update. Oh, let me Jesus update the Christ. poll here. Mama. Okay. Uh, sorry, we you do have a few sober fans. There's three of them. We have 86 percent that want to see you drinking for 12 hours or more have before been. each show. <laughs> so I mean, what time? It, what time did you say it is there? Three o'clock now. It's 2:49 a.m. Oh, that's fine. That's no problem. And I'm look at this. Your body still is, on, all, is on mid coast time zone or something. That's the Same ocean, month. or that's the Aegean Sea, and these are some fucking houses. I don't know. Yeah, one of those bottom this, house. Yeah. We're are like up on in, a cliff. Are you guys in some kind of villa? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Hey Matt, I'm I need to, to send you right here. this photo. Yeah, whatever. Hush. Wow, so well, where do you this. think I'm at? 
I don't know. I, I think you've used the the vert the like artificial background uh, feature that we have. No. In uh. Oh, you think she's now? sitting in front of a green screen? Okay. She's really in Texas at Elite There's Motorsports. Yeah, no, she's, or wherever that's she's out. At. She's on the back porch at the honky tonk, getting ready to go dance to <laughs> Hank Williams Jr. or something like that. <laughs> uh, Matt, I just sent you a picture. When you get that up, uh, let me know so I can talk about it. Because I'm going to go off on a lilish on a lilish rant here as soon as you get that picture loaded up. Yes. Are we going PDRA or uh, Seattle? Next? PDRA next. We're going PDRA Colorado. next. All right, PDRA, it is. PDA, PDRA top end reporter. What you got? I have had a tremendous okay. amount of questions about all the drama that happened, but get us down. We didn't get to cover the pro stars the way that I wish we would have. Run us down with the hotness in the PDRA, and then I'm gonna start cussing everybody out. Okay, so here's what happened. PDRA was great. We tested Friday. It was awesome. Ricky Smith ran Scott Palmer's top fuel car Friday night. If you watched on Which Flow Racing, awesome. you girl did an awesome little interview piece. Was amazing, right? Like we stuck the microphone yes. in his face when the helmet was still on. One of the things I'm most proud of that I've I've done in the last five years. Um, Saturday, one day event. We wake up. We do some a what do they call them? Hot hits. There's a concert. We do another first round. There's another concert. People are there who don't know drag racing. They're there for country music. Stands are packed. Fast forward. We get all the way to the final round. Things are going great. Get all the way to the final round. Um, I don't know how else to say this except the fucking wheels came off. Like, there was let's, nothing you could do about what happened. Let's briefly talk about the terrible luck that Tyler Crossno has as a race promoter, a series director, and a track manager. Like, how many people <laughs> do you know that deals with as much bad weather, just bad weather? Let's talk yeah. about bad yeah. weather and race promoters. And the okay. He has the worst luck of any person I've ever First seen. First of all, I love Tyler. But Me too. somewhere he has either offended a worse voodoo witch God. lady than I have. Jesus. Or like, got hammered and peed on a church sign or there is something I have never been to one of his events when there wasn't a biblical flood, a power outage, a lightning strike on the racetrack, the timing system quit. And these guys work their ass off and prepare. Like they are not a put the event on, on Thursday team. No. Let me and tell you. Tyler Cross, no, one day he's going to have a race that shatters all world records because I believe that the roulette Saturday. table of life. It was almost Saturday because things were so smooth that people were saying, like, this is incredible. We were three minutes late for the final round, and he was upset that we were three minutes late. And I remember telling him, like, Tyler, we've been four hours late before. Like, shut up. So we get to this, and none of this is his fault. And we'll get to Tyler in a minute here. But final round, everybody's in the lanes. And the top fuel guys go down. It's Scott Palmer versus Larry Dixon. It was incredible having Top Fuel there. The fans loved it. The Flow Racing fans loved it. It was great. <laughs> the Top Fuel guys go down the racetrack, and I hope I'm not speaking out of term here. Tyler, text me if I am. But the timing system, as the Top Fuel guys are going down the racetrack, literally caught fire. Like, I'm standing at the tractor underneath the You're not the speaking figuratively. Like, like you're saying there was flames no, coming out of the timing system. Right. So the top fuel guys, the tree comes down, top fuel guys go down the racetrack. Scott Palmer's parachutes come out. So Larry Dixon's ahead, but the timing system is jacked up. So Scott Palmer's wind light comes on. We look up to the tower and there's flames. Like the computer system in the tower caught fire. Like it blew up. So they're frantically trying to figure out what to do. Um, they give the microphone to Alaska, who does a great job. She put on a concert earlier that night. She was the first concert of the Pro Stars concert. Amazing gal. Um, the stands are full, packed full. So we decide they decide to do some activities with the fans, like Jason Logan would do at an NHRA race. They do. Again, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here, but this is just what happened. They do a hot dog eating contest. Um, there's a medical emergency right there on the return road. Nobody knows that the timing system's on fire and we're just trying to maintain what's happening to keep the fans in the stands to watch the rest of the final rounds. The medical emergency goes down. Thank God everything turned out okay. Woman is okay. All of that ends. Can't figure out the timing system. Can't get it done. 
Tyler has to call the race at the final round, split the money. They're going to let the guys run in Michigan for bragging rights for trophies, but we can't get it done. It's 10 o'clock at night. There's a radio local radio sponsored concert supposed to be starting at 10 PM, 5,000 people in the stands. We have to shuffle them to the concert because that's what's supposed to happen. And they can't fix the timing system. So Everybody splits the money. We have to overturn Scott Palmer as the top field winner because of the flow racing coverage show that Larry Dixon really won. Like all kinds of things. I'm talking when the wheels fall off, like somebody went in there and aggressively took all the lug nuts out with every muscle in their body. It wasn't just the wheels fell off. It's because so, Tyler offended Jesus. Well, there's only one we way to fix that. There's got to be a truck stop somewhat local to vmp and tyler you just need to go there and do what we all know you need to do if anybody <laughs> watching this is tyler crossno like i go up into race control uh, tyler is there. sitting He's there right. again tyler i'm so sorry for outing you but people need to know how genuine he's sitting there with his head in his hand like this and, and i like just the, go up and hug him and he just like ass off. breaks he down so, uh, uh and let's not gloss over do. Let's not gloss over Father Time getting in a top fuel car at 93 years old. And he killing it. Out of, He's and stood sad. on the gas and run it the, the four or 500 feet. This goes back to what I tell Phil Schuler all the time. He always tells me, boy, the first time you drive a top fuel car, I guarantee you your foot won't be on the floor when you go by the tree. I called him three seconds after I saw that. I said, if Santa Claus can hold the gas pedal down for four seconds. I guarantee you, me and Lyle will run it till it runs out of fuel. 100%. I was did proud of Ricky. Said that? I thought he did you great. He no, said, I, Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. Is that clutching page? Like, I mean, just like anybody says, he didn't believe it, but he said, as soon as that clutch hit in, she was gone. <laughs> yeah, I thought he did awesome. great. And well, I uh, think, like, he, you know, he talked about his head got back against the roll bars and it was shaking so bad. You know, and some people in here might not understand that, but they literally run a chin strap. It connects to a most of them pilot too. <laughs> on your on your helmet, and it goes down to your to your the cam lock or whatever on your belts, and you literally cinch your chin to your chest because when yet when like Ricky said, when the clutch comes in, that thing will pin your head. Yeah, to you the can't roll bars, hold, and that thing right. is so violent, you can't see. that it shook his head so he couldn't see, and that's the he only reason he lifted. Mm. But like, I think this he would have stayed there like. longer than that. <laughs> this is Mark Ingersoll, but this is what Tyler looked like that night. Yeah. From I have been, I have been that guy many times in my life, many times. But I feel for him, man, because they did such a good job. That show was incredible. Like, and if anybody, I, if anybody in the PDRA is bitching about that, like, calm down. He and I, I mean, there was there was no good call. Tyler and the PDRA staff, they put on one of the best shows that there is in drag it was incredible. period. And like, you know, having the concerts and the, this whole Pro Stars deal and with Nitro cars on the property and letting Ricky mm -hmm. make like everything they did was was spot on and perfect. And I think those guys just do a fantastic job. They don't get enough credit. They get a lot of credit, but I still don't think they get enough. They don't get enough. Yeah, Period. for sure. I love Tyler. Great guy. So, and yeah. awesome. the, do, you, do you think that – because PDRA, Door Car Racing Association, do you think long term it helps or hurts to have fuel cars on the property? Now, yes. I have my own opinion. I'm just curious what y'all think as far as the show versus the, you know, people would say that having a fuel car there takes all the pizzazz away from the door car. I say that we're in the entertainment business and give the people That's what they want to see. Ain't nothing cooler than a freaking top fuel car with flames hanging out at night. That's the quickest, quickest, the, quickest selling thing, thing on the like planet. That. Yeah, you hear somebody like, oh, I rode to space on a space shuttle. That bitch is slow compared to a top fuel car. Bitch got no horsepower. I'll tell you what, like, we at Flow, we weren't going to stream that Friday night. We were only going to stream the one day event. But as soon as Ricky called me and told me he was doing what he was doing, we reevaluated and, and we did what we did. We had some incredible numbers Friday night. Like people wanted to see that, whether it was Ricky or Larry or whatever it may be. Um, the racing is going to be what the racing is at the PDRA, but that brought people in to witness what the PDRA is, and that's a win. Well, PDRA is hot right now. And where's what's the next stop on the PDRA tour? Hmm? Hello? Michigan. She's like, 
Oh shit. Yeah, you froze. You're like, you look like Michigan? you're in the Backstreet Boys. Uh, so that's going to be a, an exciting event. Are they having furl cars there or no? Are they having any top furl cars in Michigan? Are you still with us, Courtney? See what happens when you're in Greece. I think she has left the chat. Uh, yeah, we can hear you, but you're not answering any I'm questions. I'm still there. We're going to move closer. Um, the next race is Michigan, and yes, they are going to have... What? What? It's delayed. She, she's, she's getting rapid fire of shit we've been talking... Yeah, I thought it was a good time to talk a little shit about her zebra dress. but We were just trying to get you to stand up. We can actually okay. see you and hear you fine. Every time you stand up, our viewership goes up. Ooh. Ooh, the spinning circle of death. That's what, happens. That's what happens on my tune-up a lot of times uh, when I go to load it. And that when I see that, I just know I'm making the wrong do you call. Think, do you think that is the powers? Is that the good Lord telling you? I don't think this is a good idea, Stevie. Maybe you should reevaluate this one, bud. Give me a second right. chance here. <clears throat> Be like four gallons of fuel per hour is not enough to run a bone alcohol hemi. Yes. Um, but back to what you were asking about the whether adding top fuel cars. I think that people talk about the the days of match racing. Like back in the yeah. day, they used to bring people all over the country for a match race, you know, and like while I think those days are still here, like we can still use that. It I it takes top fuel cars or top alcohol. It takes something you can't just bring to, I don't know, nostalgia pro stock cars and say, Hey, we're having a match race between whoever Ricky Smith and Pat Musi or whatever, you know, like I don't think that really works anymore, but when you're talking about a match race between two top fuel cars or two nitro funny cars or two alcohol dragsters or two alcohol funny cars or whatever, I think that still works. And I absolutely don't think it takes away from the pizzazz, if anything, it keeps the stands packed with five or six thousand people until the end of the day. You know, like I mean, I'll admit I've ran we ran the final round in Indy last year and there were like three people in the stands. Why? Because they ran top fuel right before us and they all everybody left, you know. So I think that it keeps people in the stands. It gives the drivers that cool feeling when you pull in the water box and the stands are jam packed and your heart's about to beat out of your chest. Like, I think it's all good. There's absolutely no bad. And I think Tyler has started something that people are going to piggyback. Um, and and, and I, he's one that I don't think will talk junk about that. I, I think he could be proud that he's had this idea and brought these people on and into his show. And I think it's I think it's something you're going to see more and more of. People are going to take note of that and use it. I want. 100%. Hello? I agree. Hey, how you doing? We're talking Hi, about great cars. So, oh, it's good to see you. Um, I agree so with you 100%. Screen. I'm you really can't just race. come in here firing off like we haven't been talking while you've been. Right, we're we didn't get the circle of death. Yeah. Like, I don't Jesus give a Christ. Fuck, wow. <laughs> <laughs> just because you're in Greece, don't mean we can't get a hit man over there. <laughs> Dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Me and Lyle are internationally known and locally respected. You heard. Have you heard? So back to what you were saying, I agree 100. percent I think anybody, anything that puts asses in the stands, if we're gonna brag on no prep for crashing all into each other and running all over the place and not having a tree as to bringing people into sport, I don't want to hear people bashing people about bringing top fuel cars to a door car association and bringing new people to the sport. I saw um, a very sad stat. I think there's been 20 racetracks closed this year. Yeah, this and year. We're, that's on my topic list too, uh, as far as and, well. I won't get too much into it, though, but this is how you prevent it. Right. Things like this is how you prevent closing down more of our racetracks and turning them into co-part parking lots. You so have to. We'll go ahead and talk about, about, bitching about to, it. Yeah, everybody that does not support your local drag strip, do not bitch when they close down. Mm -mm. And I know there are racetracks that are closing down, like Courtney's Internet, when people do support them. But our sport is hard, and, and I'm gonna, I'm just going to segue this right into the next topic so I can start bitching. I really wanted her on here when I was talking about this. But, you know, when you talk about racetracks, so, you know, ATCO closing down in the middle of the season, no notice. Um, do you know anything about that? Do you have any, any scope on that? I do not. I, I don't. Um, I mean, I know that that the, the race that was being held at ATCO the weekend before, it was – there were talks and posts about we'll see you next weekend. Got another banger coming up, blah, 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 on and on. And then all of a sudden 
like Sunday night or Monday morning, Atco says, oh, just kidding. We're shutting the gates. So, I don't, Courtney, I don't know if you know any more about the Atco closing all of a sudden, immediately following a race. I don't want to get – I don't know, so I'm not going to start spewing off like you see all over the internet just a bunch of things that I think are right and make people think. No, right. I've only yeah. heard rumors, and, and the things I've heard are like from here to here, so I don't know. No. I am uh, want to say a big uh, big kudos to the Koretskis for picking up that uh, divisional that they had. Uh, good for Maple Grove stepping up and taking that uh, divisional. Look. Any, I feel like when a racetrack closes down like that, I don't know the story. I'm sure it's behind there, but it's pretty disrespectful to the people that have supported you for a long time. I was laughing at you. I was laughing at the comment you pinned. I was about to say that's disrespectful. No, I was laughing at the comment. Um, we we as a sport have to make the racetracks profitable enough to where they're not worth more as a parking lot. And that means that fans got to get off their couch and come to the races. And if putting top fuel cars out there at events gets folks off the couch, I'm all for it. We all right, cannot here. forget that we were in the show business. Drag racing and cars and motorcycles going down the track beside each other is not enough to keep our sport alive. Nobody gives a shit how fast your car is. We have to have show in the show business. And that's so, why you have people like John Force that are as popular as they are, because they put the show in show business. Can you think of anything uh, over the past, let's just call it two years, that hasn't increased in price, whether it's goods you buy, services that you use, or maybe Stevie services that you offer, you've increased the price on anything, anything out there that hasn't increased in price in some shape or form? Can you think of anything? No. And that's going to lead me into my next topic. Okay. <laughs> that well, was a great lead in. So, so my local racetrack, um, Mooresville Dragway, uh, well, that's not, we've got a bunch around here. Stevie and I are very fortunate. We can be at several racetracks within a few hours. Um, one I consider home, Mooresville Dragway. Um, they haven't drastically increased the price, but like $5 to get in the gate additional. So I think it's maybe 15 and 25 to test or something like that. But you get these people that take to the internet, right? They, you have hundreds of people that go there, have a great experience. Uh, they come home, give a race recap, and I'm not bashing them, but they don't say anything really about how great the track is. You never see that. You never see half of somebody's post, and I'm guilty of it myself, talking about how good their experience was at the racing facility itself. They won. They're thanking their sponsors. They're thanking their wife for letting them go. Thanks for my kid checking my tires. You know, all these things, but nobody ever talks about much. Thank you to the uh, Mooresville Dragway staff or the Carolina Dragway staff for – keeping us safe and putting on a great show, but you let them go there one time and pay an extra $5 and it's straight yeah. to the internet. If they don't leave and turn around at the gate to talk about multiple dragway ripping or not, not them, but the drag strip ripped me off this week. They went up $5. Like, dude, these guys are just trying to keep the fucking gates open, man. Like it, it's it. You pay, you'll it's pay straight. an extra 30 cent. You'll pay an extra 40 cent for gas. If you travel uh, up North somewhere, you'll pay another $2 for a pack of cigarettes whatever, but you go to your local drag strip, they charge you another $5 to get in the gate. You want to go to the internet and bitch about it. Like that's, I just, I, I don't get it. I this don't understand. Drink I'll was pay $20. Three years ago, this drink was $12. Right. I'll like pay $40, $40 to get in a racetrack to spectate and 60 to test and tune. If that's what it takes. Like if that's what they got to have to keep the gates open, so be it. Like, come on, man. Fuck. With that said, I've got some numbers and stats. Lyle does not even know what I'm about to talk about. So this is how you know that the Shake and Bake folks are in sync. All right, talk about the cost of living. I'm going to go back to the first NHRA Pro Mod race in 2001. Do you know what the payout – But let's talk about cost. In 2001, you could buy a top-notch turnkey, ready-to-race, baddest of the bad – Pro Mod to run NHRA Pro Mod, show up, qualify number one, win the race, out the door, 150,000. Painted, pizzazzed up, supercharger, turnkey, ready to race engine, 150,000. You know how much they raced for in 2001 NHRA Pro Mod? $10,000. $10,000. Yep. $10,000. Today, a turnkey NHRA Pro Mod that may not be able to win, that's a mid pack car, costs $450,000. Do you know how much we go up to race for? 10,000. 10, you know what a dollar bought you in 2001 versus it buys now? 72% less. So when we're talking about the health of, of motorsports as a, as a whole, 
We have to figure out some way to get cost under control. Top fuel, pro top fuel, funny car, pro stock, pro stock motorcycle, 2004. The, the just to win the championship purse in those four classes, not paying back was a million three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars across the board. 2023, it's a million twenty-five thousand. They 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 race for three hundred thousand less dollars than they did twenty years ago. And the cost of and living is up a gazillion. Four times much to do it. So I'm not saying that that's not playing into some of the racetrack stuff, but I, it, from, from a guy who owns a race team that fills a half a dozen cars, I can tell you that the cost of motorsports is out of control. I'm so not talking Chase, about getting a ticket to get in a gate. I'm talking about what it costs to participate in it is out of control. Trey, Chase Freeman just texted me and said the price of a brand new pro stock roller, $225,000. Yeah. And that's not cranking it up. That's no <laughs> rear end. That's no clutch. There's a rolling chassis. That's correct. You don't have that's shit. Correct. That's no shocks. You don't have any rear front struts on it. No wheels and tires. That's $220,000. Maybe with so, 220, you might get a roller. A good time to talk about. So it's why I've, this year I've kind of been waiting on some things to happen and transpire for me in the NHRA world. So I've been kind of focused on my small tire stuff and, and doing some stuff with beer money. Beer money? And, uh, and last year I won two races uh -huh. that paid $18,000 a piece to the winner. $18,000. I priced beer money to a guy, uh, about seven months ago, um, who was jonesing to rent it, to go to a big TV show out West. Uh, I didn't get invited because I wasn't street enough. Um, but this Yahoo. What does that even mean? Not mega cash days deal. Anyway, so I told this guy, if I'm not, if the car's going and I'd still own it, I'm driving it or it's not going. And he wanted to buy it. And I said, $120,000 and I'll give you the tune-ups for beer money. And I thought the dude was going to buy it. But look though, with the tune-ups and I can tell you how to run it. In two races, I won eighteen thousand dollars a piece, right? You know, in the past three years, I've won over one hundred forty thousand dollars with that car. So, like, I, it's why the small tire deal is becoming is is more and more a thing. Like everybody's backing out of all the, it's just too fucking expensive to do it at the level we're talking about doing it anymore. And you now can... the un, the unfortunate side of that, the unfortunate side of that is the money that they're paying in this small tire stuff as the money starts to everybody's like fuck paying building a four hundred fifty thousand dollar car to race for 10 grand i can build i could build beer money three times for one hundred twenty thousand dollars. go race for ten five to ten thousand dollars every single weekend most of that's cash money then the money starts trickling down it's going to ruin small tire no prep drag racing because all the money's going to come in there but like it's the give and take and the back and forth that we deal with stevie and i dealt with it in small tire racing years and years ago we did really well locally um when that thing started gaining legs and the money started coming in, it starts flooding it out. Everybody's prices goes up and it, it, it ends up killing it. Like radio racing is suffering right now for that very reason. And so is everything going up from there. But I mean, I don't like the DB's comment. Do not kid yourself into thinking that no prep is cheap to race. It's not. <laughs> so, so the reason it's popular for racers is because they don't have clocks. And it's easier to look like a superstar over there. That's why it's popular for racers. I have a it's question. a different. Go ahead, and then I'm gonna keep going on the calls because I'm about to rip yeah, some manufacturing assholes. Law, what is in your cup? Beer. Okay, I just want to make sure. I may miss that part, but I See, just we, make we sure talked more. about this earlier. But you were, but you yeah. were, you were yeah, still yeah, you were uploading to OnlyFans. I just want to make sure. Continue. No, it's it's hot out here on the porch, and granted, I could bring a cooler, but that's. I just thought I just, I just didn't want to be alone here at two thirty in the, the morning. The Yeti cup, the Yeti cup keeps it cold longer. I feel like the shaking bake. What kind of beer? What kind of beer do you have in there? Yingling. I know. I know. I'm gonna after I bitch at manufacturers and parts and money and and the next thing, then we're gonna talk about beer because we have a beer Yang school. Yang Lang. So I feel like the shaking bake fans rely on me to make sure y'all stay a little fucked up. You know what I mean? Uh, not watch my F words. You didn't listen, so, you didn't we'll listen, listen to your sister's up. advice there, Courtney. Hey, Pot so if we're going to have a, a nut sack meter, we're going to have an F word meter for you. Speaking of, <laughs> hey, what e? about the Bob Scum Pro Stock Champion of the World, Double E International Woman of Mystery? Hey, hey e, why did you, why did you uh, tell Courtney she needed to tone her down and watch her mouth? Because I feel like she needs to implement a little <laughs> bit of um, self control. Erica, a little yes. bit. 
Do you f- ever feel like you're raising your sister for your whole life? No. no. Ask me that question. She- I'm asking double E. I'm asking the champ. Do you ever feel like you're raising your sister? Well, I feel like I have parents a little, but she really takes care of me. That's why everyone thinks she's older. My best friend, Joe, uh, we've been friends since we were five, and I always kid, and I say I've been raising you since we were five years old. So no, I, I take care of her. She takes care of me, but I take care of her. Hey, Lyle. Yeah. You missed, I don't know if you missed, but Lyle was about to slap the shit out of Courtney a while ago, and then Courtney wanted to slap the shit out of Lyle. Courtney has a false sense of security because y'all are 19,000 miles away from America. It don't matter. Erica got a strong right hand, smacked the fuck out of you. Hey, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now. I want to know if we we can get a bidding war to see what it would take to get double E to slap the shit out of Courtney. No, because I would. $2? Nope. Two dollars and a high five, Eric, and black Wait, them eyes. Let's, let's do this. <laughs> no, because oh she's God. meaner than I am. Meaner? Meaner. Yeah, no meaner. way. I could think of a better word, but I'll say that for a rainy That's day. like looking at Cord's dog Sig and thinking that it's mean. Aww. It looks mean, but there's no meanness there. It's a sweet little cute dog. That's because I, I ain't chewed your ass yet, Stevie. I've been close, but I ain't done it yet. You've chewed my ass enough. I mean, there's a couple pieces missing back there. Oh, oh me, me too. Hi, Chase. Chase, I miss you. <laughs> he left hey, can, me. He's leaving can, me. Can Stevie and I get invited on these? Uh, That's what I'm trip. saying. Like me and Lyle, See? we want to go. Look at our head. Head. See how nice. Right there. That's if y'all were right any there. further away from Augusta, Georgia, you would be on your way back. That's fine. true. Y'all on the other side of the world. We could go either direction and probably take that long to get there. Yep. All right, so we're get, we're get, the chat is heating up. All right, folks in the in the chat, if if they really were going at it and beating the shit out of each other, who's going to win? Come on. I'm, I want to know. Uh, Chase, no, I'll, Chase, I'll pay you $22 to quit lying. Listen, the only reason EE wouldn't win is because you ain't got one good eye. You can slap Shell yeah. off. You can slap Shell. I they removed your eyebrows from the little deal. So <laughs> yeah, they finally got that. <laughs> we, got, we, have, we don't have it yet, but when we come out with merch, why do people think you would beat me up? Who's lying to the world? Man, everybody is picking double E. Mm-hmm. Uh, only There's only people that want to see your tits are picking you. That's Everyone true. else that's honest is picking Erica. See, look at her eyes, people. CC got some issues. <laughs> that's because she's been drinking espresso martinis for 12 hours. You know, we need a disclaimer. Matt, you got the parental advisory up there. It's been, it's been up dropped. the whole show there, bud. Okay. Now, here's the thing, guys. And I, I feel like we bombarded this here situation, but Erica is the reasonable human. Erica is the one who has to be in the public eye and do all these things. So I get to do and say all the things that she can't. So I seem a little crazier than her. This, but it's probably this, is, is there ever she anybody is, is there ever anybody that's around y'all being an asshole and like she looks at you and you know that she wants you to cuss them out and then you go do it. Yes. Do y'all have a sister look where like somebody like needs to be cussed out and she'll give you like the and then you'll just go over there and tell them to you know kiss your ass and, like, look and like code words like me and my guys too, not just Courtney, like and they've finally been around me long enough after a decade that they realize like when I'm really struggling when you know the three tooth guys that think they're my fiance show up or like <laughs> whatever it is. Like she comes in and she saves me. Welcome, so. welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome to the show, man. <laughs> Um, but also for something that y'all don't know, Erica and I speak a language called gibberish. We learned this in mm. high school. So her, Lyle, you've heard it. You've heard Stug, it we're going to need a demonstration because I don't know what the hell you are talking about. Let's we'll see if you can do it. Um, Say something to each other that we won't figure out. Well, the guy or the girl or the guys and the girl or the guy for the gals. What in the flipping the guy or the girl, the guy or the girl. You said, the, you said me and Lyle are the most handsome men you've ever seen? In racing. Wait, wait, on three, let's see what I said. Ready? One, two, three. Lyle, Lyle has no eyebrows. <laughs> and I said, I know, I know but, but he's, he's the cute. best. Or something like yeah. that. And then I said, what? Yes, but he look. is. Hey, me and Lyle, we speak our own language, too. Yeah, we do. Lyle, yeah. I love you. It's <laughs> yeah, so anybody who's going to try she and mess it? with me and Erica, we have our own system. Don't do it. 
All right, since we have the – I'm not going to waste this opportunity since we got five-time champ here. What is your strategy going into the countdown? So, What are you, what are you going to do to, to – to, because it, it's, sometimes it's being in the zone, sometimes it's the car. It's got to be both. Like, testing's kind of over. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yes, absolutely. We have not had a great start to the year. We came out. We figured out our problem in Chicago. We went to Bristol. We won Bristol. We had something really terrible happen against Dallas. We had him covered 300 to the 330. He left on me by one. I had him covered by three there, which is like four to four and a half out the back. So we were fixing two, you know, but as Richard says, if the crickets had pistols, the birds wouldn't mess with them. So it is what it is. But I think we have a really great. I like great that a car. lot. <laughs> I'm going to fire that thing. A lot. Matt, put That's that on going a on a shake and bake t-shirt. A show. <laughs> But Not he says uh, red instead of mess with. Yeah, you gotta you gotta add the F word. But um, we were actually talking about redneck analogies tonight at, at supper. Hotter than a fresh thug fox in a forest fire. <laughs> That's going on the shirt too. All right, Matt. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and start Matt, writing this shit down. Uh, hey, if so we have three, three, three races left. With. I got I got Topeka, I got Brainerd, yep. and I got Indy before the yep. points reset. And then it, then it's time to rip it. Then it's time to rip it. So I put it on my story today. With that rap song, Luda, I'd be Luda. And he says, don't slip up or get got because I'm coming for that number one spot. And it doesn't matter how far ahead they are because we had twice the lead that Dallas has on everybody last year. And it all resets, right? And it's the final six that matter. So I think we've, um, I think we've figured out our issues. I think that we're an extremely strong team. I know that I'm a good driver and it all just has to come together. So if it does, great. My money's on us, like it always is. I love when my back's against the wall. I think it's, I think it's freaking awesome because it allows. Shut up, Lyle. You're such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> he is a dick. What no, the fuck? I'm talking about high pressure situ situations. Yeah, but, yeah, but I'm not Alan Reinhardt. I didn't ask you that fucking question. <laughs> so. Y'all are terrible. We're gonna the get moral of the story is, is I fucking love you. I love if you, if you, you get thrown off the internet, you got problems. In the last two races, we went from 15th in points to like six. So, bitch is coming in hot. Coming do in hot. you do you think that the rapid expansion and growth at Elite, which is great, is hindering your performance this year? I think that had absolutely zero to do with our problem this year. Okay, we just and that's great because outside looking in, everybody's going to say, "Okay, they got so many cars, they can't run the you know run your car." But to hear you say you think that has nothing uh, to do with it is is good. I think it has nothing to do with it. I think uh, I loved my team when it was me and seven guys and it, it, we were a single car team, but in order to get better and learn more and you have to grow. And that's what Richard keeps preaching. And he's not stupid. Obviously he's done a, he's done a really good job at organizing what we have, but the reason why we had a lack of performance at the beginning of this year had nothing to do with us having eight cars because I would have had the same problem <laughs> if it was just me. So we figured it out. It applies across the board. Um, you know, here, here and there, certain cars are struggling. Like Bo, Bo, for whatever reason, is struggling right now, and it's super frustrating because he has the same equipment as me. But anyway, long story short, I think that we're going to be just fine. I really do. And again, my money's on us, and I don't really care. But oh, you, else. she almost said, "I don't give a shit." And then I did she not. Looked at me. I did not say that. We need two <laughs> martinis in to get that out of there. Oh, um, I'm just saying this whole trip. I, said I need the whole two trip. martini, Erica. Yep, and I, I sympathize with you with what, with what you said. There's nothing more frustrating, especially for me as a, a team owner when I run customers' cars, than when my equipment or somebody else's equipment outruns somebody else. Because no matter what, it always looks like there's some shit going on and there's never any shit going on. You want your customers to run better than you. You don't want your customers to run better than you? No, we looked at the private chat. We made the mistake. Look at my dickhead came out. I already <laughs> saw that, so I la that's why I laughed at earlier. Uh, yeah, but it's good to hear that other people. Read it, Erica. What did Lyle say? Lyle said, "Ee, -E, please give God all the glory to wrap this speech up." Lyle, you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> he is, but, not, uh, but Stevie, I'm with you. Like that's our goal at Elite is to have all of our customers be super happy. Let me know and what you've done. I could oh, tell God. you the number of times that we've taken everything out of my car and put it in somebody else's car from motors to clutches to shocks to tires to whatever and then they can go out and prove themselves and we 
get whatever's left and we go out there and we do just fine. But that's the goal when running an operation like this and a business like you have to run and we have to run. Is customers got to make gotta run good. Customer, yep. my, my customers get the same thing. Best engines, best blower we got, best parts. I have literally what you said. I have taken my drivetrain out of my car mid season and put it in a customer's car. I was a customer, uh, well, I guess I was a <laughs> of Elite one time, and and uh, the first time I got in the turbo car was in Dallas, and I'm under the tower, and I'm fucking nervous as a. Oh, Wait, here's another Southern analogy. What is it? Yeah, what are you more nervous? About? Well, Don't say, say it. Thing. Never mind. Keep yeah, going. Man. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, I was shaking like a dog shit in a persimmon seed, but uh, <laughs> under the t- under the tower, Erica comes up. She leans in the door, and I was expecting like, "Hey, man, buddy, stop this!" You know, she's like, "You know, last time I drove this car, I was on fire," and I was like, "Erica, this is not <laughs> fucking time to tell me that." You know, like I'm about to make my first pass in a turbo car at a national event. You're gonna let me know the last time you this some bitch you was on fire. I've been on fire. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. Face. Please hey. screenshot that. Double O shit show. If you don't have that screenshot right there, you, you're fired. He said, he said, I was on fire. Uh, all I can see is Lyle running around in some white tidy whities like Ricky Bobby. Save me, Tom Cruise. Save me. Save me, Richard I don't Freeman. understand that to you. I'm pretty sure I leaned in and I said, hey, Bullshit. believe in yourself. Give it all you got because you dictate the outcome. Come on, Lyle. That's not and then you won. Said. I did. Lyle, we both know the truth. I did, I did. We laid our we laid our dong out there right on the start line. That goes on the that goes on the dongometer. <laughs> That's true. So the dongometer does not just count for me, by the way. Um, <clears throat> Lyle, this is a good question for you. Uh, we got any HED Pro Mod motors coming in? Pete's not about the Pro Mod life, man. He uh, he likes his small tire stuff and his LS swaps and builds. So stop it, girls. That's enough down there. So no, no uh, HED Pro Mod motors on the horizon. They are just kind of in a different market, and that's not Pete's deal. So that's uh, that. He's built, stay he's, lane. Built, he's built Hemi's. Um, those are Pro Mod motors, I guess. Um, this is a good question, Erica. Have you ever had anyone illegally reproduce your merchandise and try to sell it on the internet? Yes, I have. They've so, also tried to illegally reproduce my sister as a suitor. <laughs> So this is gonna Matt, you got the parental advisory thing up there. Yep. All right. So a lot of shaken bakers uh have emailed me and messaged me on social media about whatever this dickhead is that's reproducing oh. our shit and trying to sell it. If I find you <laughs> shake and bake show, Courtney Enders, double it's C, Cabernet Courtney, Lyle Barnett, Stevie Fast. KTR and every likeness that I have is copyrighted, and I will spend a hundred thousand dollars suing your ass for that eighty dollars that you make if I can figure out that. Also if you guys buy shake and bake it. stuff and it doesn't come from me, it's a fraud and you're not going to get it back. Hundred percent. Same with us. They do it. God, twice. it makes me mad. <laughs> I work really hard at what I do, and when some jack off tries to rip my shit off to make six dollars, it pisses me off. Well, if they would work half as hard, like trying to make money legitimately, they could probably be successful, but they waste all of this time. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah we don't have Shake and Bake merch up yet. So if you see Shake and Bake merch, it's not real. <laughs> yeah, don't buy it. Also, and if you come if around you wearing Shake and, shake and make, make merchandise, it's not going to be good either. <laughs> also, if you see Shake and Bake merch, report it, let us know, do something. Yeah. Right. Or buy me one. It'll be like uh, Boss Hog. Uh, what what happened in the Dukes of Hazard when Boss Hog gave the guy a hundred bucks in a jail cell to knock him out? See somebody wearing some illegal shake and bake merch? Give you a hundred bucks. About that. Mm, that might get expensive. What you mean? <laughs> I was showing Erica your ring lights. You look like an angel. Those are those. They look like lopsided nipples to me. Like you know the Rorschach test when you look at a picture and you just see what you want. They look like lopsided titties. Y'all done? It's a Rorschach. Everybody Rorschach. Done? Good. Get that out. Everybody feel better. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You know, I had I have a friend from high school that I hadn't talked to in a while, and I, I spoke with him this week, and he went and watched some shake and bake stuff, and he said that Stevie and I gang up on Lyle. So I'm sorry. That's Lyle. not true. It's That's I don't, I don't think we gang up on Lyle. Lyle's got uh, what do they say strong shoulders and a strong big back ass beard. Like yeah, yeah, the weight of manhood is not too much for me to bear. It's like yeah, two girls so, up on me. There we go. Your face, you. All right, 
if y'all y'all are not women, I mean y'all are women. <laughs> For those God, of I you that so. <laughs> this is I'm starting off the whole wrong way. This is what happens when four roses gets on the other side. Um so Lyle's been dogging me out for shaving my beard. So I started regrowing a beard at 3 p.m. today. And I'm going to catch Lyle by next Shake and Bake show. You Watch. have like a shout I bet you. I bet you. Yeah, I, I bet you what it costs. I'll tell you what. I bet you what it costs for me to go to Indy. You won't have a beard half this long by the time Indy Well, somebody, Lyle, I'll be the first contributor. I, don't I have won't. Beard, but I'm chipping in. I won't do it. I can't grow that kind of beard. If I could, it's because I'm, I'm what, what did you say? I'm not, I'm un. The, the cost of that manhood is more than I can bear. Is that no, the weight, the weight of, of manhood. The weight of the manhood. I, I can't get there. Too much for you to Because bear. when it starts getting to where wild animals are starting to live in it, I have to trim it. It's like, I just can't do it. Like a little squirrel poke out or get, something and get a little snack, I, I can't do it. When you get one well, long enough. Do you ever find anything in yours that you didn't know? Do I ever what? Oh, Jeff. Yeah, do you ever have anything stuck in there? Like a pork chop or something? <laughs> <laughs> like, you ever got like a fucking a nacho or something that's sticking out? And you're like, oh, T bone steak, yeah. nine millimeter, <laughs> a nine millimeter. the nine millimeter beard holster. Did you hear so, how she whispered to me? What did he say? Because I Eric, run her. Erica's clutch back from the third round at Bandamere. Yeah, right. yeah, strong back and a weak mind. That's me. That's what I, that's what, what I was saying. Wow. I was trying to mean. Huh? Say nothing, Wow. Say nothing. What did he say? Say nothing. What about third round at Bandamere? Mm -hmm. I said your clutch back from the third round at Bandamere. Yep, right here. You want me yeah, I was looking for it. As soon as I unclutched it, I'm like, well, we probably left a few discs out. <laughs> uh, Troy, absolutely not. If you guys want to make some shake and bake stuff for yourself, I don't care. Just don't sell it. Don't let me see you. Or like but for we're us. I love my shake. We're going to come out with merch. We're making some stuff. Uh, and I know I've seen some comments about me not having a lot of merch in the store right now. I just have been that. so busy with my company uh, the last six months that I have been dropping the ball on the merch. But we are going to have Shake and Bake merch coming out. We're, uh, we actually had a little think tank meeting last week, and we I'm, I'm terrible at, at it, but we're going to do it. Can you put up the comment from Endos RC? <laughs> if Lyle <laughs> used black lip gloss, you wouldn't know he had a mouth. Yeah, you would. Hold on. <laughs> I can't find that. Oh, there we go. Oh man! I mean, I'll maybe we're all night. ganging up on live. I'll try okay. anything once. Next shake and bake show, y'all can all pick on me. Like I, I, I'm sorry, I feel like we're taking a I'm sorry. There's two of us. It, it no, gets whatever. aggressive. I apologize. I er Eric was the only <laughs> apology I'll accept. Yeah, Double <laughs> Shit Show got served some court papers this week. Also, if we're going to transition to that, uh, like, dude, I don't. I did get court papers as well. They came to my shop and dressed to Courtney Anders. <laughs> Okay, so oh, fill me in. I don't know so, what's going on, but I'm going to start. Do this you know? Do you know the name Brendan Welch? Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard that. Well, we should. Okay. Yeah, that's no. the one. That's all, he's always got the free tickets in my pitch. Too. He was about to be nice, and I'm not gonna. He was confused. A, he thinks I run Double O Shit Show. B, he thinks a meme site is slander, and he said some things. And some things got skewed. He announced he had this team that wasn't a team. And Double O Shit Show kind of poked fun at it. And he sent some um, cease and desist letters to David at Double O Shit Show. And then I got some. And Erica and Robert Freeman FaceTimed me from the shop and read me my cease and desist letters that was 14 pages long. But it <laughs> if you are a man... <laughs> and you send ceased and desist letters to a woman, you are a bitch of a man. He was misinformed. Yeah, he thought Courtney ran, and nothing against David, but like he thought Courtney ran double of shit show. I do. A lot of people think Courtney and Chase do it, but they I don't. Do. And uh, I think that was where the confusion lies. Maybe I then, do it. Maybe I run it. You never know. No, I do. I don't know. But David, either way. David just I, claims I, a toilet at the double of shit show headquarters. Just ask him. What? I said David just cleans the toilets at the Double O Shit Show headquarters. That's it. Yeah, I hired him. He's he's minimum wage minus five percent. And you want to talk? He's a real dick. That guy's a real right. dickhead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is awesome. Um, we love you, David. Uh, somebody says they want to get hired to ship merch. If you go to steviefast.com slash careers, there's an application. I'm hiring people to ship merch. I'm hiring digital media people, crew chiefs, car chiefs, 
crew guys, truck drivers, engine specialists. I'll hire you to be me. If you look like me, I'll hire you. If you want to come to work and you want to make a lot of money, stevefast.com slash careers. I just For all you guys that have applied, I am. We'll have a, we can have a bartender full time at KTR. We Anyone that wants to come to work. Yeah. What if uh, I can't afford y'all? I can't afford y'all, but I will hire you. Yeah. Erica, you just money. First class We're not all grease. first class in Greece. So yeah. We can't afford that. We don't have that, um, that sort of package here. I also can't afford it, but yet I'm here. So did you fly? Yes. Coach? You can apply. Come to work. No, come I to work flew, today. I, I flew first I'm going to have Chase in a KTR shirt by Monday. <laughs> Listen, Chase can be bright. If Chase Freeman gets a job at KTR, I am quitting mine and coming there. <laughs> if we can get Chase, we got get, can get Jeffrey to be the bartender. All right, we can pick up Hank because Hank's fun. We need oh a God, couple of more fun people. Huh? If you hire Courtney, I'm out. Yeah. Because she's mean. If you hire Erica, in. Ding, ding. If you hire both, part-time. <laughs> <laughs> The, oh, I, well, Look, I, can just, I can just take that's, you in doses. No, that's just because at the beginning of the show, Lyle and I were so mean to each other. People started saying we were dating, and he just wants to say we're not. Well, he has See, no belt. He I know. Court, that's, how do you address this? Courtney is like Robitussin. <laughs> Sometimes so. you need a tablespoon of it, but if you drink the whole bottle, you'll pass out. So it's just like that. It's necessary to have in the medicine cabinet, but you don't want to drink it with supper because she's mean. Uh, <laughs> I, think mean. It's like, I think it's like a bottle of Robitussin that's out of date. Like you're <laughs> oh, real man. sick and, and you know that you probably like it, it's kind of one of those questions. Hey, my forehead question. veins do that when I get mad. Like, like you, you know that you're head. sick and, and you know that you need a little bit, but. God, it's so risky. Like, do I take this and shit through a screen door for the next <laughs> week or so? Or like, do I just avoid it altogether and just hope that this cures itself over the next four to six days? It's kind of like fajitas, you know? Could be tasty. No, she's hey, Lyle. Yeah? Lyle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't believe it took this long. Uh, oh, man. Um, My sister okay. told me. Anyway, are, I'm sorry I brought Eric on and we got on this <laughs> Robitussin talk. No, this is great. This is great. I, we're going to keep rolling the rest of the show because I want, I'm going to need some legitimate professional opinion here in a little bit because we have ran this bitch off in a ditch. Somehow we went from people making merch to cough syrup oh, and faders and Lyle's beard and fighting Robitussin and hiring everybody. For real? Yeah, out of date. <laughs> and when I say out of date, I don't mean like it's July and it went out in January. I'm talking about that shit you pull out of the back of Grandma's cabinet with bad 94. <laughs> like wow. it, separate, it separated and the cap is crusty <laughs> what? We've, we've run this, this whole bitch off in the cliff I had an itinerary hold on we, what? this one time when we were kids Courtney ate the whole Breaking. pack of children's grape Tylenol <laughs> that might be what's wrong with her I don't know <laughs> I heard that that can cause brain damage. So that's, that's, that's why her teeth turn it. purple when she drinks a bunch of wine. They're permanently stained within. <laughs> was it the uh, was it the Flintstones Tylenol? The purple Flintstones Tylenol? I'm so glad you told me this. God, Eric, the ammo, beans. the on, ammo that we're putting in the chamber for future use. See, Lyle, Lyle is like a uh, he's like the Joker on the Batman Returns. He can't stand to have a stick of dynamite without lighting it. I'm the opposite. I'm the consummate person. I will save it. So, like when I get all this ammo, like I just put it in the put it put it. I save it for a rainy day when I need it. You know I what? I'm going to use the we'll UOD on Flintstone yeah. Flintstone Tylenol. I'm going to pull that out on national television. Great. You got to remember the grape flavor, though. Why would you bring it back up? You told them we're in the math club. You were. If y'all will start fighting, you know, you Tylenol. we will get sticker money in the chat. I was gonna I'll say, get hey, people to start throwing money in there. In a second, I'm like. If y'all fought, would there be, would it be like, are y'all no, no. would like fight? No, no it'd be like. like Chase Freeman man. says, we're serving fajitas at the wedding. Lyle's going to be so <laughs> drunk from not eating. <laughs> that man will be walking around with fajitas. Okay, but listen, though. Can I, can I rant for a second about fajitas? Oh, yeah. So, like, here's the deal, Go Chase. Ahead, are you serving them on hot, steaming? Courtney, what are you, what are you doing over there? We're reading. We're, we're reading comments. Looking for Flintstone Tylenol. You fucking yeah. Um, 
Are you serving them on hot steaming uh, like cast iron plates, or can I just go to the counter and like make a rolled up fajita and then take it back to my seat? Because those are two different things. Well, that would so be you're saying, wait, wait, wait. I see softening on the fajita front. I did too. Like, did you notice that. that as a softened, uh, softened up comment on fajitas? I've always said the presentation, the, oh, the no. cinematic. Mm -hmm. So you're more of a of of your own guy, is what you're saying. Basically, like fajitas sure. that are made for you to just eat. And you that, because that's the way it should be. When you go to a Mexican restaurant and they bring your plate to the table, it is ready for forks. It's not ready for you to sit there and watch it cook for the next that's 10 fucking start. minutes. It's 9,000 <laughs> degrees. It's sizzling and popping everywhere. There's steam. The whole restaurant's looking at you. My beard smells like a Mexican butthole for the next fucking two days. Like, yeah. no. We're gonna get that is that's not fajita. If he had eyebrows, they'd be all the way up to his snapback. We're gonna get thrown off the internet. <laughs> okay, we're done. I'm sorry. Okay, fans, let's get this. We're gonna get this back on track. This is awesome. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about, and then we got to get to some fun stuff. I, no, I do. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I, I spent 12 hours waiting to talk about this, and all we're talking about is buttholes and children's <laughs> Tylenol. <laughs> and I do love it. This is the most fun I've had today, like, or this week. Like, I promise. <laughs> um, all right, so I got a new customer this week that I want to talk about. In motorsports, a lot of us ship freight, and shipping freight is some of the most pain-in-the-ass thing we do large package uh it, it's hard to do it's expensive they lose it it all sucks i have discovered i have a new lady and i want to give her a shout out that's handling my freight at ktr um you can tell she's a shake and bake fan because her dog is named ricky bobby Aww. this is their christmas card yeah these are our people <laughs> And this is her business card. If you are a small business, if you ship engines and transmissions, if you have freight needs, call Miss Cynthia. Her phone number, email, and everything is right there. And uh, she will hook you up. It is the easiest uh, freight deal that I've had. Um, <laughs> and Cor Courtney, you're not you're not going anywhere. Um, so I don't even know how to turn that off, Matt. If you can figure yeah. out how to turn that yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, anyways, that's my plug. I promised her she took care of me. I was going to get her some freight business. So if y'all ship freight in your business, I get her call. Uh, um, and... <laughs> why is he laughing? Because <laughs> Lyle's comment in our private chat. He loves you so much. <laughs> Lyle, we're, listen, if, never mind. We're fighting next time I see Lyle Barnett. <laughs> I will whip your ass. Okay. Well, okay. I hope it's in the zoo at Bandamere. I'm gonna, and you wear like some kind of some kind of white on your t shirt. That's just somebody's just gonna be brown when you leave, just smear you through the mud. All right. So oh, we have to get, get or did you mean Brainerd? Yeah, whatever. We have, <laughs> Lyle, you're not coming to Brainerd. You're scared to go hang out in the zoo with me. You're scared JR might be in there. We're doing okay. a shaking. Okay, the beardless zoo. wonder over there. You're scared to grow a beard, pussy. Are we not I'm doing not a shake and bake from the zoo? Oh, yes. Uh, we need to announce that. We are doing Shake and Bake. It will not be the next Shake and Bake. We'll have one before then. Uh, but Shake and Bake is going to be live from the zoo, and it is going to be unbelievable. I'm going to try to get us like a camera crew or something, because I don't know if I can keep track of you guys, keep you sober enough to do a show in the zoo. We so, like, need to I'm going to GoPros on our chest. Chase me, and me and Double E will be like the parental figure uh, following you all around. It'll be great. Double E ain't going to the don't zoo. Don't say the F word, Courtney. Um, while we're while we're talking about the zoo, uh, <laughs> this is Lyle. We're going to start a new a new segment where Lyle educates all of you on beer consumption. I had an idea, we just didn't get to do it this week. But Lyle, would you like to give the Shake and Bake fans a, a lesson on beer? Yeah, I would. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is not planned. He didn't know I'm going to tell him this. I'm going to see no, if the, he can say what I want him to say. <laughs> the first point that I would like to make is. <clears throat> That Yingling is the best beer produced. America's oldest brewery. Still family owned. Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Um, the good beer. Uh, if any of you on here drink Bud Light, you should immediately exit the chat. Uh, get off of this podcast. And never come back again. You're not welcome here. You're not. Um, on, beer consumption, not be on beer consumption, I think it's... Mine is based on the day. Uh, you should always start the week light, end it heavy. 
Um, <laughs> see, but but Tuesday night mm-hmm. shake and bake shows really fuck my week up. Uh, I, I I start low on a Monday. There's this huge. It's like it's like Stevie when you're looking at a data log, and all, converter pressure is kind of rolling along, and all of a sudden you see this stand up straight up like that. You think that's a bad sensor, right? Well, that's what right. mine looks like. Is that right. like when the, clutch, when the clutch comes in for real race car drivers? Is that that is that how that works? Yeah, just like that. When you step, when you let off that thing, and uh, you're actually doing the driving, and the, the truckleness is taking right. place, and like, yeah. well, I think that was a kick in the nuts. I love uh, I love driving clutch cars. Courtney, I Courtney wish we all had to run. on the. Courtney wrote if, that on a pad on the table below so that he would say it. If it were up to me, you automatic transmissions would be illegal in drag racing. And they should well, be. That would eliminate the a lot problem of is there would only be about 10 people that can drive some bitches. Yeah, Courtney <laughs> so wouldn't be everybody one else, of them, so. everybody, everybody else There's would that. be. Um, uh, anyways, what Lyle's trying to say is on the beer front, I just want to make sure that the Shake and Bake fans know that if you order a Mick Ultra or – You didn't let me finish. <laughs> I'm gonna I, I do want to know what you're gonna say. So or you start with flight and you and you okay. end Go heaven, ahead. but Tuesday messed you up because well, okay. but not every Tuesday because we're not on every week. So like this week it really fucks up my data logs. You know, so then you cruise on into you cruise on into Friday, everything's on the way up. Now, if you're a golfer, you can stand that thing up on a Saturday or a Sunday. However, if you drink Mick Ultra, you order Mick Ultra, you take because Mick Ultra is a golf course beer. I drank Mick Ultra on the golf course for years until recent happenings. Um, and we, we don't do that anymore. <clears throat> so when you get to the weekend, you should buy an extra case of Yingling Light, fill your golf course cooler up, and, and stand your data logger up. <laughs> but for those of you that are Bud Light, <laughs> Budweiser, really wish we'd have came through with our – with our deal this we week. had it i had a great i got plan. my chainsaw over here it would have all been really good um but We're i'll wrap it up and say time. you either drink yingling there's there's several other options out there if you don't too big red then yeah but this we're talking about beer courtney not bubble gum and i was making freddie, a freddie flintstone great telling all fucking gummies anyway. okay <laughs> all right what lyle's trying to say is that <laughs> if you <laughs> If you order a Mick Ultra or a Budweiser, you are ordering a Bud Light. Just because you're walking around and your can is not blue, they're from the same company. So, right. like, people are still laughing at you. Is all Including we just want me. our shake and bake fans. Yeah, Yingling just, just Flight. Work. Yingling Flight is my new favorite ultra light beer. I think See, it's tasty. that's because I was a Mick Ultra. Beer. That's good. I was a Mick Ultra beer. guy too. I have drank a million Mick Ultras in my lifetime. I would think close to a million. If not a million, it's nine hundred eighty-five thousand. <laughs> if, if it you is go to close. The, if you go to the steakhouse and you've ordered a good ribeye, Yingling Heavy is the jam. When you get home, yeah. back her down just a little bit. <laughs> Take you a little primary home. off that thing. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want to go home, start beating your dog and shit. <laughs> so then, so so get out your Yingling lights, cruise on through the night with that. The next morning, you got a nine thirty a.m. tea time. Time to Do buy y'all know how Yingling many people flights. in the last twenty minutes we've pissed off. We got the EPA. We got PETA. We got an entire other left Katie. side of the country. We Katie, have why do we not have sponsors me. on the Shake and Bake show? Uh, because we can't talk about shit like that. I've had companies try to give us money to do this, and they're like, you got to tone it down a little bit. I'm like, sorry, buddy, pick another show to sponsor. So, yeah, this idea. Not that we won't sell ads, but if we do, it's going to be to the right type of folks. I um, need to address a comment real quick. Okay. Um, Travis. Red, red Yeezy. Is Erica going to be awake this late? She needs a dirty martini. We're on three martini, Erica, right now. We are on our best Erica that we have. This, Oh, you're on Trace martini, Erica? But how how much time? You can't, because like if you drink three martinis in 19 hours, like it's not a big deal. Right, yeah, if, if you had we, your first martini at one when Courtney had her second vodka drink, then that doesn't really count. <laughs> We're in Greece on vacation on a girls weekend. We're doing just fine. What is your, uh, before we move on from booze, what is your favorite thing that you've had to eat there? Because I'm like a food foodie. Like, what's your favorite? Is it is it called like Grecian food or is it greasy food? Or what no, do you call it's it? Mediterranean. Gre- Grecian. Mediterranean food. What's your favorite thing? Are we going to get? This is our food? favorite thing. She's Kristen and she's amazing. This is Kristen. Hey, Kristen. Hi. Welcome to the Shake and Bake Show. So three months. So three months. I hope That's you don't sweet. drink uh, Bud Light or anything. I'm Stevie. Uh, Lyle, that's uh, burn his eyebrows off, Barnett, and I'm Brooke Mick Jackson. 
I have to give people a little history. Right so now. Courtney yeah. told everybody on the internet on the Shake and Bake show that I'm broke Dick Jackson, but that is I not did. true. It's broke neck Jackson. So Hold just a head. little history before we move on. Kristen, I used to work for Kristen when I, oh, seven, oh, eight. I moved to California and worked for her when I sold Sparco suits. So if I slang you a Sparco suit back in the day, this was my boss and she's become one of my best friends. And now here we are in Greece with the three amigas. All right. So since all three of y'all are here, what's your favorite Mediterranean food you've had since you've been there? I know y'all haven't been there a long time, but what's been like, wow, that's Might really good. Be that's back. different. <laughs> Poke bowl. Well, I'll really. head it back to the truck stop. Oh, man. I, I'm not a bitch. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> no, at the pool, we had this smoked salmon poke poke bowl that was quinoa, carrots, smoked salmon, pickles, avocado. avocado. It was amazing. And Greek salad also. But everything's really like, clearly out. preservatives. Like, everyone's skinny here. Yeah, yeah and that's... Here. That's one thing that I noticed going to Brazil is they eat all the time. They eat huge meals, but there is no processed food. Everything's made fresh. That's and it's a different, it's a, <laughs> yeah. Like when you order orange juice, like there's somebody back there squeezing on that thing, like to get you some orange juice. Today, the best orange today juice. what was our guy's name? Leo. 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 You guys, he fresh does mimosas this morning. You guys look like a uh, zebra Oreo. So, <laughs> 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 that's oh man thank you oh thank you. man this is good but anyway so food is good i like greek salad i don't need any of that other shit that you said i'll have some avocado but i don't even know where the quinoa greek salad's comes very from good. uh so, so i'm out on the quinoa well this is stevie this is now i was thinking today the shake and bake show has been worldwide times too we've had brazil now we've had greece so now it's up to lyle who is now coming back with as much hair on his arms as he has on his face Barnett, <laughs> do you feel like that he's got the odd stack? Because like, look you at his arm. My he's ass. got more. <laughs> <laughs> You've got more hair on your arm than I have on my. Never mind. Um. <laughs> I've also got so hair on my. Ass I was not gonna before. bring this up, but since someone put it in the con in the comments, we have raced before a couple of times. Oh my God! Look at those comments. Jesus Christ, me. I'm sure you busted my butt, didn't you? Uh, just every time we've raced. But if we raced in a pro stock car, mm -hmm. it would be different. You came and stepped into my pond. Like if I came and stepped into your pond, you'd kick the shit out of me. So I'm I'm good with it. We I have one thing I love about drag racing, and I say this all the time: drag racing doesn't give a shit what color you are, what gender mm -hmm. you are, where you come from, or how poor you are. It, if you're good at it, you can do it, and somebody will pay you to do it. it or is if you the have most, eyebrows. It, or if you have eyebrows. You can get paid to do it, and that's what I love about our sport. Because once we get up there, listen, listen. I don't, I don't know if you were paying attention a couple of shake and bake shows ago. I'm real good with a fucking chainsaw, real good. <laughs> <laughs> it took this man ten minutes to real. hack into a beer can. Like I thought that would took too long to get into the beer can. I was trying anyways, to be careful. Oh, it chainsaw. was a precision cut. Can we talk about the circus on the internet yet? Yeah, I was going to rant on some more about how drag racing is is neutral and all that stuff. Speak but, over them. Don't shut up. Speak yeah, up. no, don't be quiet. Just no, like out. what you just said, I think a great lead in to this next topic, which we discussed at dinner. We did. Is what you just said. There's a difference between being a hired, hired driver and paying to drive. There you go. Can we also talk about, and I saw this, it was a West Buck comment, which, by the way, for those of you that follow our show, if you do not watch the Drag Illustrated podcast, yeah. which come on every Wednesday in the mid-afternoon, they do a great job with it. A little more structured and more professional than what we do. <laughs> yeah. They don't drink quite as much. But anyway. Um, yeah, but if you guys, while, while you're on that subject, about, which, yeah, if you guys have not seen West Buck's podcast, uh, it's great. Uh, and, and we're fans. I, I watch it. And then you guys. But something that he talked about was that there's new interest in the sport and a lot of money coming in and whatnot. But it's these guys that think they're going to get instant success over here. And they think that their money can get them that. You can buy all the best parts, you can hire all the best people. Be like Erica stepping aside and somebody just paying me or Stevie just paying to step into her car and instantly think that they're going to go have success there. Like, and it just doesn't fucking happen. Like you're not going to do it. 
You're not going to, you're definitely not going to do it in a pro stock car. Uh, maybe a little easier, but still hard uh, in, in a pro modified car. And, and I think that Wes made a good point that it's, if this, if you think you're going to come over here with a pile of money, you've won the lottery, you're going to buy a turnkey pro mod program from Stevie fast Jackson, uh, one of the best tuners in the game. You've got everything going for you and you can sit in the car and you're going to go win the U S nationals on Labor Day weekend in just a few weeks. You're fucking wrong. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It just doesn't happen like the that. Thing, the and thing is will. so great about our sport is that Christmas tree will tell on you. You can lie to everybody. You can have the internet faked. You can have all everybody believing that you're awesome at it. But that Christmas tree is going to tell a true story. It might not tell it right away, but sit around and watch for a couple races. You it you will. you know natural talent when you see it. Like when you – and I'm gonna, I, I hate to say – uh, to say this, I'm gonna give Jeffrey Barker, my bartender, a, 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 a kudos. He gets in uh, Sydney's car to make some test runs the other day. hadn't drove a car in a year and a half. Gets in there and rips it. Never drove a blower car before. And in the first burnout, I turned around. I said, "Man, that's a race car driver." And if if you got it, you got it, and you, you know it. You're you're spot on. So are we gonna talk about Alex and Jerry yet, or what? Let's talk about. The feuding funny cars. All right, I'll let let's answer the question at the bottom first. E.E., Stevie, okay. and Lyle and equally prep cars. They're going to have to be automatic because Stevie and I don't drive clutch cars. I do drive. I have drove a clutch car. I'm licensed in a clutch car. Equally, it depends on the car. In a pro stock car? No, I'm saying in a pro stock car. I mean, in a pro stock car, Erica wins. I'm saying it would take us five runs. Erica wins six out of five. I would hit the tree <laughs> and never, I would never shift. So like you would have to be more specific. Like if we go to like, if we race something that completely takes no driving talent and equally prepped go pro stock pro racing, mod, she kills mod us. cars and equally prepped pro mod cars, all the same combination blower, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Me and Lyle are 50, 50. So we have done it. So like, I can't say that I'd crush him because he's crushed me and I've crushed him. So, I don't know. I'm not answering that. Yeah. I think I think if it. any of the three of us put our mind to any of that, uh, it would be very difficult to beat us at it. I'll just put it like that. It's definitely a three to two win, whatever way it goes. Uh, Double E, everyone in the chat has picked you once again because me and Lyle oh. do not have tits. Well, I think Erica so. is a shake and bake favorite. It's really annoying, but she is. I mean, she, she gets picked to beat your ass. She gets picked – and the racing <laughs> deal. We, we can't win anything. Very annoying. No, I think y'all are great drivers. And I think, well, Stevie, I've watched you for forever. And I used to wear the stupid Stevie Fast tank top. You she know? did. You <laughs> wore it in your personal I love that shirt. That wasn't stupid. That was glorious. It was like Fast AF or something. It was it was a cute tank top. Um. Anyway, get, but Lyle, you know. I was really impressed with him because I got we were teammates. So I got to see all of his data and watch him drive and to see him come in and, and do what he did was pretty impressive. So blah, blah. blah. No, but I'm serious. I'm, I'm not just, just kidding. Wow, I'm sorry. Whatever. I'm serious. I think you're great. I think Steve. Yeah. Great. yeah. Next up, like, I'm going to put double E in the car for, for the drive that bitch back segment. You can stand outside and video from the sidelines there. CE. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and I do, and I still get more views. So no, I'm saying, no, you, you didn't listen. I didn't listen. I'm sorry. I was reading so a the comment. Next time, the next time we bring a we dub just back, grow them on the show. We're going to drive that bitch back from the winter circle. I'll just put double E in the passenger seat. You can stand outside and video from the outside. How you feel about that? Okay, go ahead. Bye. What What would happen probably would be some on track turmoil and shit talking in the interviews on the top end. Is probably what would happen. Which segues right. into our what next we're segment. About to talk about. Fire to cannon. What happened? What happened to lead up yeah, to yeah. the Alex I'm, Laughlin, J.R. Todd feud? What do you okay. guys have on the inside scoop? And let's let the fans know what's happening. Nope, they're leaving. <laughs> this is my turn. Oh man, my turn. Great to see you. I have I have much things to say on this. Okay, I'm gonna pour it up. So, also the wine is white, not red. It's very upsetting. Um, trying to that's our new like most people get tooth whitening toothpaste to whiten their teeth. CE just changes the white one. Uh, Here's the thing okay, I have to say it. I'm a member of the media, I stand in the middle, I love anything that brings any kind of attention to the sport. But we have a very two different human beings in a situation here. So, 
Long story short, a lot of shit happened. A lot of people think that all of a sudden, these two are chuckle fucking over here at the cooler. A lot of things have happened to bring this J.R. Todd, Alex Laughlin thing to the front. A lot of people think that it was just one Facebook post where Alex said, let's get this FedEx car and beat him. We all know, in case you're oblivious, it's a DHL car. He was saying FedEx to be funny and try and talk a little shit. Jared didn't like that, said something on the um, Fox show. But there's been a lot of other stuff that's happened before this. There's been, if you guys remember a few months ago, um, Alex, Sean, and JR. <laughs> if y'all could see what's happening in front of me, you'd be impressed that I'm in line. Do, do we Alex want to be able to see it? <laughs> no. Alex, Sean, and JR kind of had a squabble online um a few months ago it was very public i'm not saying anything that's not been said because they commented as themselves on facebook sean jr alex arguments were thrown there's been some issues calling each other clowns memes were said yada 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 fast forward to this weekend alex and jr have each other there's a post made by alex that says the fedex car we all know it's dhl yeah blah 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 JR says on camera, calls Alex a clown. Some things happened on the starting line. Some hesitations had been made. People kind of construed it as somebody was waiting on somebody to stage. Somebody wasn't. But the bottom line is, is this thing has been brewing for months. This was not something that just happened this weekend. If you go back, go on Drag Illustrated, go on Double O Shit Show, you can find the shit yourself. Um... And I think the bottom line is, is there's two types of people here. And I'm friends with both of these people, friends with Alex I'm friends with JR I'm friends with Sean. There's two types of people here with two different motives. And I'm going to get shit for saying this, but some motives are to win races for their sponsors and present themselves well. And other motives are to create havoc and to create social media drive and to have your name be said as much as possible. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but both of them did their jobs this weekend. J.R. Todd went to the final round. Alex Laughlin got his name said more than any other first round loser had their name said. And I'm waiting for these two bitches to exit the room before I finish. Thank you so much. Anyway, there's different motives. And I think both of them did exactly what they were supposed to. But like Erica segued this into this as some people are hired on their talent. Some people are hired on contracts have been able to keep their mouth shut and go in races. And then you have other people that are on here to, like I said, create havoc. And both of them did their jobs this weekend. And I don't really know why the internet laid so hard on JR. Because JR just kind of, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion, it's four in the morning here in Greece, I've had some cocktails. In my opinion, JR had simply had enough of the little small talk and decided that he was going to take lead from the Seattle track owner who said, I want the gloves to come off. I want people to talk shit. I will handle the fines. If there's any fights, there wasn't, but this was said. Y'all go look back on the internet. The Seattle owner said that. And it gave people a reason to kind of start some shit. So JR had his, his, he was tapped out of it, said something, but the Seattle owner doesn't have to deal with the weeks come, right? Like the internet, Alex has followers. Alex has the speed society thing. Alex has a YouTube channel, all this stuff. So the internet kind of took Alex's side on this. But I, I, I don't really know. I want to, I want to know y'all's opinion on this. But that was my, my long-winded of each of them did their jobs. Wants to win races and wants to get people talking. I like both of them. Um, friends with both of them. Uh, I saw Alex's post about the yellow FedEx car. Uh, immediately was like, okay, just a little shot. You know, I'd be honest. I wasn't aware of any past. I'll call it drama, uh, any banter back and forth on the internet. I had no idea about any of that. Um, JR's, you know, deal at the end, his interview at the end of the racetrack, kind of firing back at him. I was like, damn, I was a little harsh, you know, but it seemed aggressive if you didn't know it did, you know, but there, there, but so I'm probably 1800 or 1900 of the 2100 watching right now. Um, 
I would say that most of them felt the same, right? Like they saw Alex's little post. Now it was obvious after that when he was like an honest mistake. Like, okay, it wasn't an honest mistake. That was just a, that was a jab. But I was unaware of anything that had went on prior to now. So now Jr.'s kind of his shot at him uh, at the top end was uh, makes a little more sense. Um, I will say that uh, my suggestion of a boxing match um, at the PRI show Saturday night in Lucas Oil Stadium uh, at in Indy. Uh, I think is a damn sure uh, that is a sellout crowd. Uh, I think we could sell any and all tickets we want to. There is absolutely no reason that us three shouldn't be ringside to call it. Um, but I think it would be fucking awesome if we could. So, and I saw some comments after my post about why wait till then? Well, let's not have any black eyes between now and the end of the season on top end interviews and stuff. Let's keep the sponsors happy and let's freaking box an indie. Like, why, why not? I asked, I asked somebody tonight. I was, I knew we were going to talk about this. I'm sorry, Stevie. I cut you off. No, I asked, I asked somebody about this tonight that I knew that would have Intel. And I said, why do you think that the internet completely took Alex's side? And again, Alex, whoever's watching this, like we're just reporting the news here. Why do you think that the internet took Alex's side? Because if you go read all the comments, people were like, JR was a crybaby. He shouldn't have said that, but maybe like you, Lyle, they didn't because, know the other things that because happened. They didn't know because they did. They, they weren't aware of the, what had, but gone also on he said now. this source that I have said, made a good point and said that in this kind of game, the racetrack doesn't matter, right? Like when you make a comment on television, we all know that's going to go to the internet. And when you have the internet behind you, like Alex does, which he's done a good job of because that is his job with the Speed Society guys, with the Haviland thing, with his YouTube channel. There's a lot of people that are making his brand happen online. They're the ones behind him on this. And so it's going to be leveraged in that side. But you've got to look at it on the other side of where JR is out here doing a job. I think that JR kind of maybe had the public not on his side because he'd said a few things about John Force in the last few weeks, which we could talk about on another level. But um, maybe had the fans not on his side, but you take the people who are watching the racetrack performance, which is JR's job, they don't have as much of a voice as Alex's fans and Alex's supporters online. And so I think that it was kind of way more one-sided than I thought it was going to be online on the Alex side. But the, the person that I was speaking to tonight made a good point. It was like, you're not going to win when you're fighting that battle there. And that's a that's a freaking solid point. No, it, no and, and I agree. But like when you're, somebody like me that was, and I feel like I should have known, but I didn't. And when you look at it as if it just started with Alex post, then it looks like Jr. overreacted, you know, like, and I like Jr. Todd. Like he's a good I saw guy. A shirt, I saw a shirt this week that says everybody that you see is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. Yep. And what you guys are talking about is when you see stuff on the internet and I'm going to address a specific comment. I've been waiting on it. Uh, you don't never, none of us know the whole story. Like we've, I've had some really heated rivalries. We've rolled around in the pits. I've had my ass beat at the track. I beat people's ass at the track. And, and depending on when you get your glimpse, you don't know what's happened before then or after then. You don't really know who's the dick. So I, I try not to pick sides until I know the whole story. I very much do like that they're talking about it and that they're saying what they think. I'm going to put up Sean Morrow's comment. I completely disagree 100% with your comment. I think what puts our sport at risk is not being uh, the character and not telling the truth and not saying what you feel. Um, I've never had money to race my whole life. The only reason I have a job doing this at all is because I have told, I have been honest about how I feel. If there's people I don't like, you know it. And, and, and I think that it puts the sport at risk. I guarantee you why DHL, and Haviland may not like the type of publicity that they're getting. I promise you they're eating up the publicity. Phil Schuler taught me a valuable lesson in 2014 or 15 when Spencer Massey was driving their top fuel car. They were racing for the championship, leading the points going into Phoenix and DNQ'd the race. And I call Phil thinking he's done lost his shit. He said, Don came out and said that they got – a hundred times more return on D and Q in that race than they would yep. have ever made if they won the championship. Keep doing what you're doing. 
So one thing you guys got to be, you got to understand as fans is that any press is good press and they're getting a lot of press. I want to read a text message that I had tonight. And I said, didn't Seattle owner say something about wanting quote gloves to come off? This person said, yes, which may be a crock of shit. Yes, he pays your fine, but does nothing about your future and reputation. And I said, do you think it motivates people like Alex to say and do the things that he said? Yes, the NHRA wants drama. I'll start some shit, leave you high and dry, and then don't do anything about it. We get back to the normal show. Well, now we're back to the normal show here. But I think that in that front, Alex wins that because, again, like I said, there's two different motives here. And I know Alex wants to win races, and that's why he's out there. But Alex makes a living off of his social media stuff. His brand is bigger than what he does on the quarter mile. And that's a different story for JR. So, I just think it. I just think it's interesting because the controversy, in my opinion, what people just see is that one post and that one comment on Fox. But it's so much bigger than that because Alex's job is to make sure that people talk about Alex, right? So whether or not you think he's, and I quote, a little bitch or saying whatever he's saying, we're doing it. We're talking about it. And people like JR can't come on to these shows and address it because their motive is a different deal and they're paid by people like Toyota and DHL or FedEx to come on and win races. And, and I kind of wish that JR would have won the race just to make this a cooler story. But I think this brings in a whole nother conversation of there's people out here with different motives of yes, we've got sponsored to win races, but people are out here making a living doing different stuff, just like we're doing here on the Shake and Bake show. What you're explaining is the difference between Stevie Fast and Keith Haney. One of us is out there <laughs> One of us is out there to win races, and one of us is a pocket midget that just wants to be talked about. It's the same right? thing. When like, me and I Haney mean, were going, Haney, I smashed that man every time we've ever raced but one time. And still, he loves it because people are talking about him. And, and that's exactly. the deal. If, you're, if you require viewers and eyeballs to do your job, you will do what it takes to keep the eyeballs and viewers in your corner. Do not pick a, a internet fight with a very internet savvy person. But, you're not... Just like if you're going to get in an arguing contest, don't get in an arguing contest with Phil Schuler because you're not going to win. I have tried for 30 years, and I, I just I know that that's just not something I'm going to win. I still try, but you're not going to beat Alex on the internet. He will get up in the morning at 7 a.m. and start making content about you, and, and it I've doesn't seen matter if you're right there. or wrong. I've seen him on there replying to every <laughs> comment, and I, again, sorry for mounting this, texted JR to see if maybe they wanted to come on, and didn't want to address it. And I think that's cool, but that just reiterates the different motives of people out here doing what they're doing. But when you say something on TV, there's going to be repercussions of people like us sitting here talking about it. But I, I think it's great for the sport and I think we should have more of it. And this, this, this comment by invincible is why the shake and bake show does not have sponsorship yet, because I will not be hindered on this platform by money. This Stevie, is, it you were is talking earlier about, the fans response. And I remembered Brian Lones made a post and he was talking about Don Perdon being in the booth and, and how cool. Don was back in the day, you know, he was, right. he was tenacious and he, yep. when he beat your ass, he let you fucking know it, you know? And he said, our drag racing fans have longed for the days of people like Don that yeah. would in your mouth. I just beat your ass and I'm gonna let you know until we go to Sonoma next week. Right. And he said, our drag racing fans have longed for the days and those days of of a little anger, a little menace, a little chin music. Lo and effing behold, we got some Sunday. We had a blast with it on the show. Sadly, it appears we have wounded the feels of many drag racing fans out there who claim to want some mustard on their hot dog, but when they get it, claim it's too spicy. And, you know, he goes on to say, I'll never relent from the idea that this is a sport of confrontation, a sport of ego, and a sport of attitude. Why? Because that's just the facts. There's heroes and villains. Fans should pick a side. Uh, you either are going to like whoever's doing the right thing or like whoever's doing the wrong or however, whichever way you see it. If you're a fan and don't hope for JR and Alex to race in Sonoma, pickleball may be your thing, and I agree. Like, if you don't think that what happened in Seattle – was good for the sport of drag racing, then you are, you're, you're a fan and you're a viewer of the wrong sport. And I don't want to run anybody away from the sport of drag racing, but like, if you didn't like that, and if you don't think that there are people that are going to tune in in Sonoma, hoping and praying 
that J.R. Todd and Alex Laughlin end up beside each other, you're watching the wrong fucking TV station, dude. Like, just <laughs> stop reiterate, watching. You know, and stop being about what you don't, said. Make, don't make a social media post about how you think it's unprofessional. Like, if you think that's unprofessional and that's <laughs> bad for the sport of bad drag racing, you're fucking wrong. Like, for the love of God, there's been 20 tracks closed this year, and I'll go to Carolina Dragway next week and tell Stevie Fast Jackson he is a shithole drag racer, and I will crush him in the ground if it'll put 4,000 people in the stands. Do I think that's the truth? No. But you know what? If that if, if, if that's the story I tell, and I'll tell him I'm going to crush him in his pro mod and beer money, then by God, Stevie, show up. But what makes it awesome is when it's <laughs> genuine animosity. You mm-hmm. cannot replace it. And what we got here is some genuine animosity we haven't had in a while. Courtney, we need Gary Selzy. We need Gosh. Doug Zella. Go ahead. Here's to continue that text. It's the same for drivers nowadays that are vanilla. This sport has lost everything when Snate and Ace, et cetera, left because nobody speaks their mind. Then you speak your mind. Ah, you can't say that. It's disrespectful. You need to shut your mouth, drive, and thank your sponsors. This sport was badass when drivers would just punch people like Letta and Ace. Torrance slaps Cameron, and they try and cancel Torrance. Yeah. And that's true. And, and that goes to the top of NHRA. They want this, but they don't. They want to make sure they can control it. And in the old days, when NHRA realized that the drag racers, us, are the customers, you didn't have as much corporate. I know they have more corporate responsibility than they did in the old days, but yeah, – it, it sucks. You should be able to slap the shit out of somebody on the top end and not go to prison. Well, That's like, what drag racing was. John Forrest was doing that shit when I was a kid, and it was awesome. Yeah. So and last year last year in Virginia, I red light against Stevie in E1 or E2 or something like that and outrun him, right? Like, we had a hot rod that could have won that race, and I wanted nothing more than to walk over him and smack him in the mouth because I just want to be like – if I wouldn't red lit Stevie, I'd have crushed your ass. I know. I, I get out of the car. I go over there to try to, like, console Lyle. He's slinging his Hans device in the freaking woods, mad as hell, and won't talk to me. And that's that's passion. That's what you want to see. Uh, I, I love it. I think we need to get some more of it. Um, and, and, yes, we definitely got to give some credit to Wilk for winning the race. Uh, he has really worked hard for a long time. He's running good. They have Justin um, – uh, okay. um, Chad Green's car running good and a uh, huge congrats. And, to and Wilk's got some big money. Like he's got some good money behind him. He's got you know? good money and he's got, got some, some good talent. They're going to, they're going to, you can already see he's won two races this year. They're going to start doing good. I mean, they're already doing good. The moral of this right now, and I know I got on a soapbox there for a minute, but if somebody's taking to Fox to say something, I can guarantee you it's not just the latest Facebook post that has made them do that. Go back, figure it out, because these guys are trained to take it, take it, take it, and just take it out on the racetrack. So the fact that JR did that, I love it. I don't know if it had anything to do with the Seattle owner saying what he said. I don't know if they played it up. I also heard that they only played it on NHRA TV um, and talked about it online. That they, I didn't watch the TV um, coverage of it, but I heard they didn't play that part of the interview on Fox, which I think is fucking bullshit to be honest with you. Um, but again, there's always more to it. It's not just one little thing. It's been a whole thing. Um, I, I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, everybody's thinking they're going to box. That's not going to happen. It's uh, not going to happen. I've had my ass whooped a bunch, and I never had nobody whoop my ass that told me that they were going to whoop my ass. It just I was I told a Phil this morning, I said, when I get my ass whooped, you're just it's just happening right now. In the same way, I'm not gonna go tell you if I'm gonna if I'm gonna stomp you. The stomp. They're not gonna do that. There's Jr. can't do that. Can't do that. But we do want to encourage that rivalry. Where I guarantee you, if they line up, it'll be just like when when Manny and Chris Thorne lined up. Uh, the starting line will be 200 deep. Everybody on everybody's crew's got each other's back, and I love it. I cannot I wait to get back into some drama. Uh, speaking of drama, all right, we covered the roll around on the floor. Let's talk about – I got two two quick things, and we're getting long-winded, and I plan on having this done in 10 minutes. That's let's Erica's talk, fault. Let's blame Erica. Let's talk about good and bad manufacturers in our sport. I want to say thank you to the manufacturers in our sport that do what they say they're going to do, build parts when they say they're going to build parts, and charge a fair price for their product. And have it and, sold out to the big corporate guys. 
And to the manufacturers that continue to lie for a year and a half on when you're going to make something, charge twice what it's worth and control supply so that you can control price, someone will come in and manufacture what you're manufacturing and if you continue to dick us around. If you're going to charge the kind of money you're charging and not provide a service, somebody will come make it. So thank you to the good ones and uh, the bad ones that are shit companies are... I hope somebody starts making your product. Go ahead. I hate to go back but sean langdon has entered the chat Woo! <laughs> so sean says Can you go back? sean i just read some text messages from a good friend of mine of some things that have happened <laughs> can we um, start over corny's been drinking no we're not gonna start hours. over she can't start over but we've i feel like you and i've talked about this and we've hit it but i just wanted to address that sean langdon was in the chat and we've talked about the different motives and we've already addressed it. So maybe just on the replay, go back and rewatch it and you'll be happy with what we say. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I'm going to ask Sean a question because I'm a Sean Langdon fan. Uh, do, do you, are you looking forward to how this rivalry plays out or you just want to get it squished down and go back to drag racing? And then I'll let him answer. And that's, that's all. And I'll you say. will. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the problem with that is they know who I'm talking about and there's not enough people to make parts for me to start blasting manufacturers because you won't be able to buy anything. The hardest <laughs> thing we have in drag racing. Sean said they need to hug it out. The hardest, thing that, we're, uh, the hardest thing that we have in drag racing right now is getting parts and getting people. And both are impossible to get. Like, I don't care what you want to pay for it. There are some parts you just can't own because they don't give a shit about making enough of them. And you can't do Sean. anything about it. <laughs> I can't even. I can't even address that. <laughs> what the hugging it out? Sean's, they need to hug it out. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I, I was. I'm gonna. I thought about putting a YouTube poll up of who would win if they got in the boxing ring, but God, I don't know. So I don't know either one of them good enough to to do that. No, and like I said, Sean, the Cliff's notes is as we talked about two motives: ones to win races, ones to be talked about, and everybody's doing their job. That's all. Yep. Um, I, for one, look forward to when they line up again. I can't wait. On I equal think that, ground. I think that things like this just initiate conversations with rivalries and things of that sort. So if it gives us reason to do things like we do here, then, you know. All right. Next thing, I'm going to piss off NHRA when I talk about this. This is on my last on my list, and I'll let y'all we'll take some questions. <laughs> Right now, we're in negotiations with NHRA about when we run Pro Mod cars, whether they're elimination rounds or on Saturday or Sunday. If you guys, I don't even know if this will work because I don't even know if they open it. If you guys like seeing Pro Mod cars run eliminations on Sunday, I want you to email NHRA and tell them that you want to see Pro Mod race on Sunday. And you'd rather see Pro Mod race on Sunday than snowmobiles or dirt bikes or whatever else that they have of exhibition class this week. I love snowmobile racing. I love all the exhibition stuff that we have. Uh, but if you guys want to see NHRA <laughs> also, run pro you, mods on Sunday, get them. A, just go to NHRA.com and send them an email. Also, if you want to see pro mods run on Sunday, hit the like button on, uh, on our feed here. Oh yeah. We oh. haven't said that. We haven't begged well, for thumbs up there at the top. Thumbs pro up. Mods on Sunday. Give us pro mods on Sunday. Fajitas are awesome, and like and subscribe to our yeah, YouTube gosh. channel. <laughs> Lyle, if we when we hit forty thousand, uh, we don't we have we're getting close to forty thousand on our subscribers. Uh, you're gonna eat fajitas on there. I already told yes. people we're doing it. In Brainerd, so Lyle will Lyle will have yeah. If we can reach forty thousand subscribers before Brainerd, that's a, that's a makeable target. Then we will have a I'll we'll have fajitas. For a while. Look at him. He's uneasy. Here's, he can't even handle it. He's like, here, here's what I'm telling you. <laughs> if we hit 40,000 and you take me to a Mexican restaurant, like, oh, oh wow, yeah. we've hit 40,000. And they bring a steaming plate of fajitas and set it in front of me. The first thing I'm going to do is grab it by that little condom looking cover they put on the end of the skillet and I'm going to dump it on the fucking floor. Okay, whatever. I mean, now they may all all Mexican restaurants in Brainerd are now not going to invite the Shake and Bake Show to come in to eat because you fine. think you're going to throw Kilimanjaro all over their floor. I am, uh, and I'm with you. I want to see Pro Mod run every day too. Uh, I feel like it's like space. Pro Mod door car racing is the last frontier. 
All right, that's all the bitching that I got. I <laughs> Me got. too. I kind of went off on a tangent there for a minute. Um, I got to come up with a question so I can give away some shit. Uh, oh, we'll I take can. some questions in while I'm coming up with a question and an answer. Uh, we will take some questions in chat if you guys need to know anything. Thank you, uh, Kevin. We appreciate that. And the, I'm always bitching about you guys for not subscribing. For those of you that are already subscribed and watch our content, thank you also. I don't want to be like the cell phone company that gives you the good deal when you're buying the contract and then they treat you like shit after you already have the AT&T phone. Don't you hate that? Like, intro, I'm paying $200 a month for my cell bill and they can get Jobo off the street to come in. It's $19.95. Well, I've been paying my cell phone bill for $200 for 25 years. That was very salesman of you. Uh, no, I have not dropped the button yet. But we're getting closer. Getting closer. All right, I'm going to let y'all handle... Uh, no, still not made a run yet. Getting closer. Uh, but Stevie, do you have news of your license? Uh, I knew you were going to bring that shit up. I should have had a picture of it. I got a email. You suck. I, I got a. I got a. It's not a good picture. Don't post that up there. Um, I got an email from NHRA Technical Department today, Josh Peterson and Doc Surface. And they have reinstated my competition license uh, as of effective today at noon, high noon. So I was, if you guys watched the last Shake and Bake show, I was cleared by my medical team. And it has, I want to say thank you to the medical team that has been working on me for the last eight months. Uh, it's been a lot, of, a lot of hands on deck, physical therapy, neurosurgeon, orthopedic surgeon, uh, nurses, doctors. Um, thank you to all the folks that took care of me. I told them all right away when I come in there. I said, I'm good at what I do, and I want y'all to be good at what you do. And they've taken care of me. NHRA got all my medical stuff, and uh, they reinstated my competition license today. So I can drive. Bam. Again. Let's go. That's a big deal, Stevie. That is a big deal. It's a big deal. I felt, I felt like I've been walking around naked in the world for eight and a half months. Everybody cheers I mean, to Stevie. Choop, choop. So we, uh, we now got a little piece of paper again that says we can drive a race car. Hey. Uh, Pretty Russell, soon we're going to figure out if we still can. HRA. Russell Moore says the NHRA will be done when Force retires. No, I hope not. The, the sport of drag racing is too too broad. But the only uh, reason that will happen is if people like yourself and they just stop supporting and stop showing up to watch. Nope. Because John Force retires, like John the way Force I look Force. at that is what would John Force, what would Dale Earnhardt want you to do? Like he spent, he, like John Force has spent his whole life giving us his life for our sport. If, when he retires and if he retires and whenever he retires, he wants his legacy to go on. Sure. He wants to put somebody in his car. Same way Dale Earnhardt would tell you today. Like, I, I don't think that's the case. I don't either. I agree. Um, I got to come up with a question and an answer. That's what you're supposed to be doing the past five. I, we started I, talking about – that's because Zebra Cake right here started talking about my damn license. Well, can, can I say something? I – had something happen here, but can I say something on that front is hypothetically, if something came about to where something was going to happen outside the NHRA and we had a race and John Forrest wasn't going to be there, would people still watch? The answer is absolutely yes. I'm not saying that's going to be a thing, but like John Forrest has been an integral part of where we're at. Brittany Forrest, incredible, the whole generational deal, but like we've built things. And there's there's brands and there's teams and there's things that are important to the sport beyond that. I, I think he's very important to it. But I think that that's a little bit um, a little bit small minded to say. And maybe in the weeks to come, you'll um, remember what I just said here and um, we'll kind of check back to that. Oh, huh. all right. Hmm. What do, you, do one of you guys have a question? I'll let you if you have a question and answer. I'll let you give away shake and bake. Class. I don't because I'm terrible at shit. No, bake. I'm I'm out on that. All right, tell Double E. I'll, let's let her do it. She's right there. Tell Erica. her to come up with some trivia question that's kind of difficult, and whoever uh, answers it will get a Matt. Throw up a picture of the serial numbered shake and bake flask. So it can be anything. It doesn't have to be racing related. We'll see if we can get Double E. Put her on the spot. Sure, sometimes I make them. Crafty. Sometimes I make them so hard that like very few people know it. But it can be any. There we go. Uh, Lyle's still got eyebrows on there, but I like it. Uh, pretty good looking guy. Look, on man. Left. 
Courtney's drunk it's in drunk. that it's in that throwback. picture. Yeah, good. R.I.P. You got We're one? Gonna... Were you talking shit? No, no, I said you look nice on the flat. No, not you, Stevie. Him or him. <laughs> No, my eyebrows are still etched in the flask. Oh, uh, r- real quick before the question, you guys will know this. I see Matt coming on. You got something, something to say, voice of the shake make show? Well, actually, I think the new and all the ones I've done uh, had that correction. That was number one, and it's the one, really one of one, but uh, the rest of them, no. You have there you one. go. After sewer number one, Lyle didn't have Matt, any eyebrows anymore. Matt, who has one of one? Matt, <laughs> Lyle's going to get it. Uh,. It's a shaken baker. I, I I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. Okay, real quick oh, before already, our question. You that out? Yeah, we did that. We When we give away shit, we send it out the same day. Yeah, we send our stuff out. <laughs> Mine's like three weeks late, but we're getting there. No, motherfucker. I'm talking about the the one with eyebrows. Like, that one's gone. Yeah, yeah. we gave it away the first one. That was serial number one. We're on serial number like eight or nine, ten, something. Uh, okay, real quick, and then we're going to ask the question. I heard a lot of shit about is Scrotum and somebody else talking shit about racing me. Y'all know anything about that? Have you seen Scrotum? Scrotum can't talk shit about racing you because he no longer has a car. I I got a lot of feed on my social media and I can see it in the, in the chat um, about uh, Scrotum wanting to race. I didn't know if I got called out or something. I I don't know. Can't call you out when he doesn't have a car. Some dude just asked how many ex-husbands I have. And that just irritated me. They're wanting to know. They were wanting that to be a question. I don't care. That's one. Hush. One. All right. You got a question? Are we doing the Santorini question? Yes. Y'all, y'all, you can't. Don't say the answer and then ask when the question. Is, this is not Jeopardy. It, okay. Sorry. I have a, I have a peanut gallery here. Um, when was the last volcanic <laughs> eruption? What? You need to tell Matt the answer in private chat. He's not going to know this shit. Okay. What year? And this has to be fast because I don't want you MFers to Google it. They're gonna Google it because nobody will know. Volcanic eruption in Santorini, Greece, that formed the crescent of the island I'm on right now. No, I don't want another ex-husband. I'm good, thank you. (laughs) Chase is. I feel like I feel like we might have a cheater. (laughs) <laughs> we do, but it's okay. First person wins. And Double O Shit Show will handle the prize pack. Email to double O Shit Show at gmail.com. Well, it's already been answered, so. Was it Chase? <laughs> Don't let Chase win. Fuck Chase. <laughs> Can't call hey, him out. If, if Erica rigged the question and answer and gave Erica, me an answer before. Shit. Are you on the phone with him? Hey, that no was shit. before you yes, even asked is. her question. That was look at the peanut gallery. <laughs> you cannot answer before the question is asked. That's some so bullshit. Four thirty in the morning. What do you people want from me? All right, so this is for a Kate, uh, for for a shake and bake flask. Who won? What? I mean, Chase Freeman technically. Chase doesn't get a prize pack though. Chase just no. Do I? I have another question if need be because Chase fucked that up. All right. Well, whoever no, Ryan, really won that, we have Ryan to Ryan Sakey won. Yeah. Who did? Ryan Sakey. Ryan Sakey. Did you get that, Matt? Yeah. yeah See what the happens. Next, he's the next, he's the next one. He wants a KTR sure. flask. All right. Tell him I'll tighten him up. Um, so uh, if you want, I don't even know what just happened. If you won that, go to uh, send Matt an email at matt at stewiefast.com. And then you can go ahead and ask your double O shit show. Go ahead and give away your, ask your next one for your, your backup for your double O shit show thing. But don't let Erica do it because she's just going to like text it out of the answer. She's on the phone with Chase right now. Do you realize I just got hoodwinked? You got hoodily dinked. It's five in the morning here. I'm so tired. All right. We got to wrap. So go ahead with your backup question. I'm done. You're done. We got that one. I'm done. All right. Uh, Let's see. Everybody that's related to y'all knows the answer to the question. Uh, see, and Dion, screw you, Dion. Correct. <laughs> Holy smokes, this whole show's went off the rails. I'm yeah, sorry, we derailed this with the Anders Anderson train yeah. here. Um, anybody got any comments or got any questions in the chat that you want to know? 
Uh, don't I don't know. I wish Sean Langdon would have had more thoughts on the. Um... Yeah. Uh, it is exciting when we have pro drivers and we have personalities in our sport to come and watch our show. Um, For sure. I appreciate that. I'm a Sean Langdon fan. I keep every time I see him, I tell him I want to drive that damn car. If you just let me just hold it for just a minute. All Holy right. Discombobulated. Yep. Hey, uh, NC Homeboy says you're gay. We're off the rails. DK and Ben. We're off the rails. I've got to go to bed. We're done here. Am I done? Uh, it was 3,000 hours ago. Uh, what, what the news coming out sunset? Um, no, I have not done a burnout yet. Uh, just got a license like five hours ago. Um, uh, probably not ever gonna yes, happen. Come in. It's fine, we're done. Um, never because it's just not a good idea. Okay, well, uh, I heard you say that, so fuck off. <laughs> oh man, thank you. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> why does people keep asking if I eat a corn? Dog long ways. What does that mean? Like somebody I'm asked here. if I ate corn the wrong way too. All right. What is <laughs> Matt? It's time to close it down. Thank you guys. Yeah, we I'm appreciate done. you watching this week. Good night, everyone. Matt, it's time to one, two, three. Uh, Hit it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in two weeks. We love you. Shake it back! Does that feel good? Yeah!